uh, where, and, and I know he wasn't kidding because he's not the, the type who would do that, was dead serious about it, was the, the, a case of uh, a presence in his, in his room, in his bedroom as a matter of fact, where this presence was, would literally, he would be in his bed and, the, and the, the mattress of the bed would fold in on him with a pretty good strength. And it was, <laughs> that's pretty odd, but, but it would fold in on mm-hmm. him and until he would either scream out to the presence, get out of here or whatever, I mean, I'm not scared or whatever the case may be. But this thing happened a number of times. There was like a weight upon him, something like, like that? Or? Yeah, like a weight or something upon uh-huh. him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, but it would literally fold the the mattress of the bed, uh huh, like around him, like try to wrap it around him. And if you've ever tried to even do that with your own mattress, that that takes quite a bit of strength. Yes, indeed. It's uh, there is a, a book that's only a few years old now. It's called The Terror That Comes in the Night, and it's about nightmare phenomena similar to this. But I've never heard of one quite like that where the mattress actually came up around the sides of the person. But a common nightmare type effect is to feel a paralysis that you can't, you have no control of yourself, you can't move, you can't scream, and there's something near you in the room, and eventually you can summon up enough strength to uh, to move, to uh, get some motion back in uh, uh, your hand or whatever, uh, uh, move a finger, move part of your body, and then or even to scream or to yell, and that seems to break the uh, the charm, so to speak, and then things get back to normal. But it, in fact, I had an experience somewhat similar to this in New Orleans, or in, in Louisiana recently, Ed, which we can talk about later, uh, but uh, I just had this experience a week and a half ago uh, uh, at a haunted, very haunted place down in Louisiana. Wow. But the other question I was going to ask was any anything new on Resurrection Mary? Uh huh. Resurrection Mary, uh, for some reason, has been uh, pretty quiet where it, where it, when it comes to uh, uh, recent reports. But I say recent reports, I mean something happening in the last uh, a couple of years. But what I have been stumbling upon are quite a few earlier stories that have come my way. And I, I think part of it is not necessarily that Resurrection Mary is quiet, but I call it the incubation period, where a lot of people just don't want to talk about an experience of that intensity very soon after they have it. And it might be something they would talk about only to trusted friends, to relatives, but not something they're going to be readily uh, admitting to the uh, general public at large or even bringing to my attention. So very often, I, I don't hear about these stories until a couple of years down the line when people feel more comfortable with discussing this and they feel more comfortable with themselves and admitting that the experience was real and uh, they've been able to come to grips with it. Well, I enjoy the show, Eddie. I listen to it as much as possible, and uh, you do a great job, and uh, I'll be listening for a, l- a little longer. I have to get to bed sooner or later to get up okay, well, in the morning. We'll have some more good stories for you coming up. Okay, thank you, Richard. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye-bye. you, Mark. Bye-bye. Our WGN phone number, 591-7200. Richard Crow, oh, oh. 30 O'Hare, 33 Midway, 39 Downtown. Humidity, 88%. The North Wind at 10 miles per hour. Are you going to have a ghost hunt or a tour on St. Patrick's Day, or are you going to be too busy doing something else? Well, actually, I'll be speaking. uh, Let me get a plug-in for a lecture I'll be doing, Ed. On the night of the 16th, a very appropriate location to speak at, I'll be speaking at the Haunted Irish Castle, Ah. the uh, Beverly Unitarian Church. I'll be speaking at 7.30 on Saturday night, the 16th. And this is open to the public. There's a slight admission charge. And anybody out there in the audience who wants to hear my talk on Irish folklore, and I'll have all my slides, and I'll be talking about Biddy Early's bottle and everything else, my adventures in Ireland. And uh, that will be 7.30 on the 16th. And just give the Beverly Unitarian Church a call uh, tomorrow, or today, I should say, or tomorrow on, on Saturday, and they'll give you all the particulars. But it's a 7.30 time. And there will be other entertainment there, too. There will be some step dancing taking place. And, of course, the Irish Castle is uh, long considered haunted out there on 103rd Street and Longwood Drive. So if anybody out there, particularly South Side residents, who want to come out and uh, hear me speak, be a good chance to do it at a very uh, interesting location. Absolutely. We'll be right back with Rich Crow and your phone calls on WGN. Summer will eventually be here, so get fit. Call the Glass Court in Lombard for a free three-day pass. Call the Glass Court in Lombard at 708-629-3390 for a free pass to fitness. Friday night, uh, one, uh, one show up, the next show we do will be our Chicago History program. Hope you'll tune in. My panel of Chicago historians will be right here. In the world of luxury, one name says it all. Steve Foley Cadillac. One name means more integrity, more convenience, and lower prices. 
Steve Foley Cadillac with three locations offering the Midwest's largest available inventory of Cadillac luxury and style. Steve Foley in downtown Chicago and in Northbrook and Foley Rice Cadillac in Oak Park where special GMAC smart leasing allows you to experience Steve Foley Cadillac style with no down payment and for less than you ever dreamed possible. Whether you're still climbing the ladder of success or already at the top, you'll enjoy being treated with Steve Foley Cadillac style. No matter where you live, there's a Steve Foley Cadillac showroom just minutes away. Talk about convenience. There's Steve Foley Cadillac downtown on Rush Street at Ontario. Foley Rice Cadillac in Oak Park, just east of Oak Park Avenue on Madison. And Steve Foley Cadillac in Northbrook between Dundee and Lake Cook Roads on Skokie Boulevard. Or call Steve Foley toll-free at 1-800-25-FOLEY. That's 1-800-253-6539 for more details. You know, pitching the last inning in a no-hitter ball game is a lot like making a pitch to expand an already successful business. Getting to the bottom of the eighth took all the smarts you could muster, but your challenge lies in the next inning. It'll take even more brains. By now, you've tried every trick in the book. You begin to doubt your ability to control the game, to maintain your accuracy and sharpness. Somehow, you've got to find the ingenuity to outsmart the best that your competition can stand against you. At Lakeshore Bank, we admire the intellectual effort that entrepreneurs invest in planning for the future. No one can do your thinking for you, but we can help you figure out what ideas to pitch next. If you're running a business with over $1 million in annual sales, call Tom Regner at 312-915-5720. Our experience can help you plan a brilliant future. We're Lakeshore National Bank of Chicago, the bank for the entrepreneur. Friday night at 8.30 on WGN Radio, it's NCAA Tournament Basketball. Live from the Dayton Arena, the DePaul Blue Demons meet first-team All-American Kenny Anderson and the Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech. Hi, this is Chuck Swirsky. Join Hall of Famer Ray Meyer and me for all the exciting play-by-play. -play. It's DePaul and Georgia Tech, Friday night at 8.30 on 50,000 watts of Blue Demons power, Radio 720, WGN. This is WGN, just like Mr. Swirsky said. The Pheasant Run Antique Show, Chicagoland's most diversified antique show, returns for its seventh season today, tomorrow, and Sunday at the mega center of Pheasant Run Resort in St. Charles. 150 quality dealers from coast to coast will be showing fine period furniture and decorative accessories from country to formal. Meet antique writer and meet a gold. While you're there, there's free parking. Enjoy the treasures of the past of the seventh season Pheasant Run Antique Show. Today from noon to nine. Saturday from noon to seven. And Sunday from noon to five at the Mega Center Pheasant Run Resort in St. Charles. We're talking about a cost for you. Uh, let's see here. Here's Alice. Hello, Alice. Hello. Hi. Hi, Eddie. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Oh, are we on the air? Oh. We are. You're on the air, Alice. Oh, we're on the air. Okay, I thought you guys forgot about it. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. Now, Eddie Alice was just down on my uh, trip to Louisiana recently. Yeah. His spooky trip. His what trip? Spooky trip. Oh, spooky trip. Did you have a good time? <clears throat> oh, we had a great time. Was okay. Yeah. Well, we pulled up at the mansion. Bob wants to get on, on this, too, Richard. Sure. Well, Bob had the experience there at the uh, mansion. Uh, yeah, he had a dream, and Richard had a dream. And when we pulled up, Bob said, oh, you can check in, but you can't check out. Welcome to the Hotel California. <laughs> no, Hotel Hell. Can I say that, Eddie? Uh, well, this isn't the radio station from Hell, but I guess you can say that. Okay, let me get Bob on. Bob, go ahead and pick it up. Who's that, her husband? Bob Salzman and his wife, Alice, were uh, uh, on the trip. Hello. And what happened, Ed, is that... Uh, Four of us decided to stay on, extended our trip a few days. The rest of the group went back to Chicago, and we went up to St. Francisville, Louisiana, to visit this haunted plantation house from the 1790s called the Myrtles. And it really was quite an experience, to say the least. Oh, yeah, you brought me a brochure from that. Yes, oh, it's, yeah. it, they built themselves as America's most haunted house, and I really don't think that's far off. Certainly they're one of the top haunted houses, if not the number one, because uh, the experiences that we had that night were uh, very, very intriguing. Boy, look at that. Uh, well, let Bob tell his story, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Hi, Ed. Hi, Bob. Now, Bob, first of all, Bob Bob is a very down-to-earth guy, right, Bob? G give your background here a bit, uh, just <laughs> so we know. I say that. You know, I've uh, been on uh, some of uh, Richard's uh, uh, local tours, and I guess you could consider my, I could consider myself as a uh, 
non-believer. I'm uh, an attorney in the downtown Chicago, and I'm from uh, uh, Missouri. You know, you have to show me. But when when uh, <laughs> we got uh, to where the mansion was, and we didn't see anybody. I was really getting a little concerned. But when we went to uh, to sleep, I remember falling asleep, and and this is very. I can't explain it at all. That I was going down the stairs and Alice was with me and this is what I dreamt and the only reason I recall it is because she woke me up during what turned out to be a nightmare to me uh, as we're going down the stairs there was a uh, it would appear to be a woman I wasn't going to call it an apparition but with like a, a shroud uh, I only saw it from the back and I grabbed this woman's hand and there was like a ring on it and I kept saying who is it who is it and Alice was in front of me and then I saw a look of horror on her face and of course, as Alice explained to me later, when I I woke up, I, I sounded like ooh ooh to her. But I was saying in my dream, "Who is it? Who is it?" And then, within 15 seconds, uh, there was a knock on the door, and uh, we uh, from uh, one of the other fellows that was uh, with uh, Richard, myself, and Alice, and uh, apparently uh, Richard and had a uh, dream simultaneous uh, to mine, and we were 40, 50 feet away from each other. I mean, this was a huge place. And um... Right. The odd thing, too, was that uh, the dream had a similar element. Now, my dream, and I didn't think it was a dream because it was so very, very vivid. I was lying on my back in the day bed with my hands crossed across my chest, and um, uh, Chuck, a friend of ours who was with, he was in the four-poster bed on the other side of the room. Well, I remember lying there, and suddenly I felt in the right palm of my hand a ring, a ring with a uh, large uh, faceted stone, uh, purple stone in it, and a little silver ring, and I slipped it onto my little finger, and it only, only went up to the first knuckle. When I did that, suddenly there was like an electric charge that went up my finger, my hand, my arm, and my body. And I actually had to fight off the sensation, and it took every bit of strength to just get up enough, uh, right. every bit of fighting to come up with enough strength to go, Chuck, help me, to my friend across the room. And he ran over to see me, and he was so frightened by the look on my face as I was coming around that, of course, he ran across the hall to wake up Bob and Alice. And at the time that he was banging on the door, of course, Bob was just coming around out of his dream, which had that same ring element, although his ring was on the finger of the apparition. We will follow up on this. I'm going to put Bob and Alice on hold a moment because it's news time. We will be right back with Richard Crow, Bob, Alice, and you on WGN Chicago. Big Sutler is here. We have breaking news brought to you this morning by your jewel food stores. Here's Dick Sutliff. Thank you, Ed. Chicago firemen have been busy with a couple of fires. Let's get the latest now in this live report from WGN's Larry Schreiner. Larry? Dick, we're still at 18th on South Harding Avenue, a four-story apartment building, large apartment building. Fire confined appears to like one or two apartments. We haven't gotten upstairs yet. Five Chicago Fire Department ambulances to the scene, at least five persons to the local hospital, three of them children. Now, the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office, as of 15 minutes ago, tells me one woman, an elderly woman, has died in the fire. However, the Chicago Police Department are saying five persons have died in this fire. The fire being investigated by both Chicago Police Department, bomb and arson, and the Chicago Fire Department. It appears at this time the fire is accidental in nature, possibly electrical cords. That investigation will continue, and about three or four blocks East of here, another fire in a large three-story abandoned building. Flames visible for some distance. Firemen were able to bring that fire under control. That fire, a short distance from 18th and Spalding, extremely suspicious in nature. From Chicago's west side, Larry Schreiner, WGN News. Arson is suspected in a fire that killed seven dogs and six cats at a Homewood animal shelter earlier this week. Police and fire investigators say they smelled gasoline on debris at the Homewood Animal Hospital on 183rd Street. A man was convicted Thursday night of dousing another man with gasoline and setting him afire during an argument about a year ago. The jury deliberated nearly six hours before finding 27-year-old Anthony Crane of West 60th Street guilty of aggravated arson and murder while committing arson. The conviction was in connection with the death of 61-year-old William McHugh of South Kedzie Avenue. Trying to make the most of a modest budget, a brief campaign, and the short attention span of the media, Chicago Republican mayoral candidate George Gottlieb laid out his views Thursday in a wide-ranging interview. More from WGN's David Stewart. Standing behind a podium literally wrapped in a flag, Gottlieb snipped roses to dramatize his call for Mayor Daley to come out of his rose garden and debate. The voters of Chicago should be completely offended that Richie Daley, at this time, is a candidate for mayor of Chicago, 
He's a candidate just like I am and just like Eugene Pincham, and he should come out and confront and, and debate the issue. On the issues, Gottlieb says he would replace Superintendent Leroy Martin, rid the police department of politics and internal squabbles. Gottlieb says he is against gun control and the Lake Calumet Airport, but for an educational voucher system. Gottlieb says he does have the backing and soon will have some money from top Republicans like Jim Edgar, Bob Custer, and George Ryan. David Stewart, WGN News. A Gary woman was sentenced Thursday to 100 years in prison for killing her father and son last month. Pamela Brown was found guilty but mentally ill in the killings last April 6th. Attorney General Dick Thornburg says the Justice Department will take another look at all police brutality charges filed with the federal government over the past six years. Thornburg took the action after the brutal beating of a Los Angeles man was captured on videotape. The New Jersey State Senate passed an anti-backhauling bill to prevent truckers from using the same vehicle to haul food and garbage. The sponsor of the bill calls backhauling disgusting and unsanitary. We'll check Chicago's weather right after this. Sit down to a dinner of good food and great values from Jewel. If you're looking for the very best, look for Jewel Chef Cut Lean Round Steak. This week, just $1.99 a pound. Alongside, serve farm stand tender all green asparagus, just 98 cents a pound. At any time's a good time for Jewel Orange Juice, just 99 cents a half gallon. For a dinner of great values. Spring comes in with great coupon values at Jewel. So get clipping and bring in the coupon book you received in the mail from Jewel. This week, you'll save on the widest selection of items for your family. Like a 12-pack of assorted Coke favorites, just $2.49 with coupon. Or a three-pound bag of farm stand yellow onions, only 39 cents with coupon. For the very best coupon value. Clear and cold overnight, low from the lower 30s near the lake to the mid-20s inland. Friday, mostly sunny, high in the lower 40s. Friday night, clear and cold, low in the mid to upper 20s. Saturday, mostly sunny, high in the mid-40s. It's now 38 at the lakefront, 32 at Midway, 28 officially at O'Hare Field, 88% humidity, north wind at 8 miles an hour, barometer 30.13 and falling. Our wind chill now, 17 above zero. That's WGN News. I'm Dick Sutliff. Now again, back to Eddie. Now back to Eddie in a minute or so. All right. When I was first starting out, I knew I had to plan for my future. I worked hard all my life and made decisions I hoped would pay off. I just didn't think the future would get here so fast. I mean, when my house started to be a chore, I thought about moving in with my children. But I enjoy my independence. Then I heard about the Moorings, a retirement community in Arlington Heights. I looked at a lot of places. And one thing became very clear. The Moorings was the place for me. The grounds are beautiful, and the staff is great, but the clincher for me was the value. The monthly maintenance fee is less than I used to pay to maintain my house. Looking back, I realize my choice was a practical as well as a good business decision. If you have any questions, give the Moorings a call at 708-956-4304. That's 708-956-4304. The Moorings of Arlington Heights is owned and operated by Lutheran General Health Care System. It's 107 with me, Ed Schwartz, and uh, my guest, Rich Crow. Uh, we had Bob and uh, Alice on the phone before we took our break. Are you guys still there? Yeah. Yeah, we are. Okay, because sure. we're going to call... Are we going to call that haunted house? Yeah, we're going to try to call the owner of the haunted house down well, there, guys. you know what, Richard? Remember? I was wide awake and felt the ring on my finger. There was something down there. You know, after we had these uh, weird dreams, the next morning when I was running around the grounds taking photographs, I kept looking around on the ground. I, I was sure I was going to find a ring. Uh-huh. Now, how did yours feel, Alice? It felt like it was on my little finger uh -huh. up to... The second knuckle. Uh-huh. First or second knuckle. Suggested the ring to me in my telling of the dream because I came up with it first, and that's, it's just something that I can't explain, and uh, I'm, I'm a little concerned about it, and I've always said, I, I guess I've never said that I'm a non-believer. You know, you just have to show me, and I think that uh, <laughs> that veneer of, uh, oh, that's ridiculous, is uh, was peeled away, and I would certainly... Uh, under better circumstances, like to go back uh, to the Myrtles and uh, 
certainly spend a week there, but I, I think I might want you to spend a whole week there, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Come on with some wild dreams. Yeah. Well, leave your radios on because we're going to make the phone call. Do me one favor before you guys say goodbye. Uh -huh. Would you would you say hello to my four little ghost hunters, uh, Alan and Stevie and Brandy and Larry, if you don't mind, Richard? <laughs> oh, for sure. I promise them you'd say hello and uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day to them. And Alice mentioned she's going to bring them all on a day trip here coming up shortly, too. Oh, so. definitely. And you know what? New Orleans is great. Everybody listening, he's got a haunted Salem, too, where the witches are. <laughs> Listen, nice talking to you. Thank you Thanks, both. guys. We'll try bye to get bye. some more information okay. here from the owner. Thank you both. We're going to make it. What's the guy's name down there? Uh, it's uh, Bowers, David Bowers. Okay, give me a minute to see if we can pick him up. Uh, no pun intended. I'm sorry. And, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, D. Mark Sowers. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm saying that wrong, yes. Uh, we'll find him here in a moment, and uh, we'll be right back with Rips on WGN. Well, there goes Mr. Chevrolet. He's the biggest dealer in the USA. Z. Frank for the very best deal today. Z. Frank for your Chevrolet. Z. Frank, the world's largest Chevy Geo dealer, has lost its lease on acres and acres of critical car storage area. Now Z. Frank is stuck with hundreds of new Chevys and Geos and no place to put them. Rather than pay excessive short-term storage, uh, Z. Frank is blowing them out with huge emergency discounts at Z. Frank's largest liquidation ever on a brand-new Chevy S10 pickup for just $6,777. That's 6777 for a brand-new Chevy pickup. Frank, he's the biggest dealer in the USA. Z. Frank for the very best deal today. Z. Frank, Z. Frank, Z. Frank, Z. Frank, Z. Frank, Z. Frank for your Chevrolet. The Frank Chevy Geo 6060 Northwestern Avenue here in good old Chicago, Illinois. Uh, this is WGN at 591-7200 with Rich Crow. If major carpet mills trust Matthew Clugin and his sons to clean and care for their carpets, shouldn't you? This week only get two-for-one cleaning. Call Matthew Clugin for details at the 743 1300 here in Chicago. Rich uh, is uh, just back from New Orleans, where he stayed at America's most haunted house, the Myrtles Plantation. And uh, I have a brochure from the uh, plantation here in my hand, and it says here, ghost tours available, and uh, overnight accommodations. You can stay in a garden cottage, or a master suite, or a bridal suite. Can you imagine people get out there on their honeymoon? Would that be a great honeymoon site, huh? Boy, boy, I've got the, uh, the brochure, what I meant, what we have here. Okay, the final in the hockey game, the Blackhawks 6, the Kings 3. So uh, that is the end of that. Boy, it took all night. Well, West, Coast. West Coast time, but still, it uh, sounded like it would never end. Uh, back to the plantation, uh, Mr. D. Mark. Sowers, S O W E R S, is the owner of the Myrtles Plantation. We have Mr. Sowers on long distance. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir, I am. Uh, good morning. Welcome to the radio in Chicago. And uh, I don't know if you're normally up at this hour, but uh, we're glad you are tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm sitting here with your brochure in my hand. Your uh, plantation looks absolutely beautiful. And I understand that you, uh, you are a relatively new owner. Is that correct? Uh, approximately about 14 months ago. Now, why would a guy buy a haunted <laughs> plantation? I mean, what got into you? Well, sir, I didn't really didn't realize as I was 15 years old that it was haunted. But at this point, I really think there is a power here. I don't know what it is, but there is a power at the Myrtle Plantation. What are some of the things that you have noticed or have happened to you and your family? Uh, myself, of course, is a black a hooded figure uh, at the foot of my bed, leaning over my feet. Uh, also, by coincidence, of course, I realize, we almost realize, this is a coincidence and very out of the ordinary, water dripped from the air conditioner vent to the floor, uh, which I had already spent quite a bit, thousands of dollars, I might add, to repair uh, to the floor. I, I can't realize it, but... The Myrtle Plantation is America's most haunted house, and uh, what can you say? There is a power here, more than we all should know. Do most of your uh, customers, clients, guests come looking for an experience, and uh, if so, do many of them report unusual things? 
Uh, quite a few do, but about uh, 75 to 80 percent. Uh, of course, some hear, some see. Other people don't hear. They don't hear. They don't see nothing. What can I say? Uh, What's the history of this plantation? Did something violent or terrible happen there? Is that why there are spirits around? Uh, approximately 10 murders before and after the Civil War. Mm. Uh, the only documented murder was... January 26, 1871, William Winter was murdered in the plantation. But I've heard myself, I've woken up in the middle of the night, I've heard a woman sobbing from the second floor. I don't sleep on the second floor, I sleep, sleep in the master suite, of course, on the first floor. I'd be on the first floor, mm -hmm. too. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, we must say three footsteps. I want, what significance is three footsteps well three is a very uh, prominent number in all sorts of folklore and legend that uh, things do come in threes and three is usually a psychic number to give you a sign I, I suppose you could say once is an accident twice is coincidence but three times is the, the real thing and so three is usually the number that these things occur in uh, is this Richard? Yes, it is. Oh, how you doing? Very good. I'm uh, sure you won't forget our group. We were scared stiff that night or that morning when you uh, came back and found us. Ah, uh, Richard, I won't at all. What do you think about the number 13? Is it lucky for some people or not? Absolutely. It's a lucky number for some people and unlucky for others. It really depends. It's a judgment call on your individual circumstances. Some people do find it to be a very lucky number. I was thinking, some some guys operate a bed and breakfast. Uh, Mr. Sowers operates a, a bed and booze. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you bring up the number 13? I was just intrigued uh -huh. to see where you felt about the number 13. Are, are there any 13s prominent in the plantation architecture, anything? 13 stairs or anything like that? By the uh, way, the, why are those stairs so steep? Those are very steep stairs going up to the second floor. I, well, I neglected to ask, ask you that. Well, now, Richard, we can overlook that, but we can go to the old French bedroom. Uh, my interior decorators, my beautiful, beautiful silk uh, draperies, said there was exactly 13.1 um, yards of fabric. It was so much of 13, I'm quite disturbed about it. I don't know if you can, being into this kind of stuff, if you can explain it to me, mm -hmm. being a layman, of course. Well, is that for many people, that's certainly an unlucky number, isn't it? 13 can be unlucky, but as I mm -hmm. mentioned, Ed, it, it certainly can be a lucky number for other people. And I know people who play number 13 in lotteries and things like that, and uh, sometimes with, with great success. Maybe uh, Mr. Sowers is a bit triskaidekaphobic, huh? <laughs> That's the name of that problem. I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, fear the number 13 uh, without uh, better reason, but uh, it is interesting that a, a specific number like that and a number with such connotations would pop up uh, uh, again and again. How many uh, people can you accommodate on a given night? Uh, approximately 30. If you had 30 people in-house on a good given night, how many of them in the morning might report something unusual? Out of the well, whole bunch. it varies. It varies, of course. Uh, I should get a directory, but it varies, of course. One, some people see something, other people don't. Now, Rich uh, was telling us that he uh, and some of the people in his group had a pretty wild night at your place. Well, of course, I was fast asleep. I don't know what they <laughs> see or, or or heard. Well, it was to me. It was very amazing that. Uh, uh, the dreams would have these similar elements, if you want to call them dreams. That is unusual. Two people uh, have the same dream. And the, the ring motif popping up in the, in the different dreams. Uh, to me, that was very, very significant. And on top of that, both Bob and myself pretty much woke up uh, at the same instant. Uh, uh, woke up talking in our sleep or yelling in our sleep uh, at the same time uh, and had uh, the same element in the, in the dream with the ring. The, Did you ever find the comedy denominator like that in uh, experiences with people in different rooms? No, I haven't. Uh, of course, I should get a directory, of course, and they should diary, whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. directory, whatever. Start a little uh, sign-in book of uh, your name, your address, and your experiences, your remarks there. Like, uh, well, within stuff, reason, right? Richard, within reason. <laughs> Did anybody ever report a ring missing? Maybe, uh, maybe that's why it comes up in dreams. Have any rings been stolen or disappeared? Well, well, no, sir, of course, uh, you know, the spirits or the uh, entity, the power, I feel it's a power, exists here. We don't steal. Mm -hmm. They don't steal. I meant dis disappear. Steal is a bad word. Well, maybe maybe some historical incident in the past had something to do with the ring. Uh, we just don't know about it yet. Because I've got, 
Uh, of course, the Myrtles have been mentioned in a number of books uh, on Southern uh, history, architecture, and ghost stories, but I've never come upon a ring uh, idea, so it's, uh, it's a new one on me. It's a beautiful place. If somebody would like to get your brochure uh, and maybe take a trip down to you uh, down there in uh, Louisiana, Mark, what should they do? Drop you a note? Is that the best thing? Yes. Uh, the Myrtles Plantation, P.O. Box, 1100 St. Francisville, Louisiana, 70775. Right. St. Francisville, L.A., for Louisiana, 70775. Phone number, area code 504-635-6277. All right. I thank you for uh, letting us bother you tonight. Do you have any... Uh, any uh interesting ghost tours planned for the near future? Anything coming up in the near future we should know about? Well, Richard, I don't know. This place is, shall we say, quite a uh, different thing that I'm contending with. But whoever comes, dare they meet, you know, dare they meet above the great. <laughs> oh, well, so certainly keep me posted on anything that happens in the near future. I'd love to hear about it. Richard, I will. And thanks for loving us talk to Thank you, you for a late call. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. That sounds like fun. It's a beautiful place in the brochure. A big uh, antebellum plantation in the it, south. Not only antebellum for the pre-Civil War, Ed, but it's pre-War of 1812 when you yeah. consider it's going back to the 1790s. And the uh, uh, the original founder uh, was a uh, very close associate of George Washington. So uh, General David Bradford, uh, a leader of the Whiskey Rebellion, something we can all uh, drink, to. Uh, drink to. There you go. And uh, an amazing, amazing bit of history there. And, of course, it's just north of Baton Rouge. It's a nice drive up from... Uh, uh, New Orleans, you can uh, stop at Nottaway Plantation on the way and eat catfish or anything else. It's, it's a great, great trip, and boy, I, I, Eddie, you know me, I don't put my stamp of approval for a place as haunted, unless I really believe it, and this place has got something going for it. Good. We'll come back and talk more with Rich Crow if you want to join us. It's uh, at 591-7200. Are you remodeling your home instead of moving? The best place to begin is the Spring Home and Energy Show. Friday through Sunday, this weekend at Harper College in Palatine. You'll see over 200 displays showcasing the latest products and all of the services for remodeling, rehabbing, and landscaping your home. You'll also have the perfect chance to talk to some experts. Come meet Jerry Baker, America's Master Gardener. His numerous and practical presentations cover every aspect of lawn and garden care. And uh, even you brown summers. Uh, will be green when you visit this weekend. Saturday evening visitors can meet WGN Spike O'Dell. Uh, he'll be there. The National Association of the Remodeling Industry presents how-to seminars all weekend on a variety of subjects. Discount tickets are available from Dominic's and True Value Hardware Stores. Special senior admission Friday only for solutions to your home repair problems. Or for new ideas, come to the Spring Home and Energy Show, Hopper College, the one-stop shop for improving your home. That's all happening in Palatine. Hi, this is Wayne Larrabee. Events in the Persian Gulf continue to dominate the news. But we can't forget those thousands of veterans, those who served our country at other times, men and women now confined to hospitals operated by the Department of Veterans Affairs. There are four such hospitals in the Chicago area where care is provided for about 2,700 men and women at any one time. With reductions in the federal budget, more of the extras for these veterans must come from volunteers. The Veterans Bedside Network was formed more than 40 years ago to help with these extras. Now, the network needs help itself, or it won't be able to continue providing entertainment, outings, and refreshments for these hospitalized veterans. I'm one of those who pay regular visits to the hospitals. Bears players come with me to help brighten the day. But other help is needed. For more information, write to the Veterans Bedside Network, 5343 Harper Avenue, Chicago, 60615. That's 5343 Harper Avenue, Chicago, 60615. Friday mornings are always a little tough for you, and uh, Friday can be a, a rough day. I mean, it's been a long week. Friday, you kind of, oh boy, here we go with uh, whatever ails you. If you uh, need information to get started early in the morning, traffic, weather, news, sports, or just a friendly uh, a voice in the early morning darkness. Don't forget, Chicago's most listened to morning radio program starts at 5.30 a.m. Monday through Friday, Bob Collins invites you in to spend the morning. Now playing at Relaying Dinner Theater, the hilarious comedy, Run for Your Wife. 
The first in the 1991 subscription series, four shows for just 50 bucks, four shows with dinner, only 98 bucks. Call 1-800-837-PLAY. Also now playing The Wizard of Oz at Drew Lane's Children's Theater. Call 1-800-837-PLAY for reservations. Drew Lane Dinner Theater, 95th and Western. Richard Crow, Ghost Hunter, here at WGN Radio. we got a lot of calls for you. Uh, this is a uh, gentleman who calls himself Father Bob. Hi, Eddie. Does that mean you are a priest? Yes, sir. Of what denomination, Father Bob? Traditional Catholic. Well, it's good to have you up at this hour, Father Bob. What uh, parish are you with? I'm out in West Chicago mm-hmm. with a uh, mission church. Well, we're glad to have you up tonight. Yes, is Richard awake? Yes, I am, Father Bob. Good to hear from you. <laughs> oh, you know yeah, Father Bob. Uh, yes, indeedy. Okay. Yeah, I've known Richard for a while. have a, uh, a friend who works with uh, Chet, okay? Okay. And she has a poltergeist who is leaving wet marks on one particular chair in her house. An incompetent spirit, huh? Well, he, well, he, he hasn't been taught too well. I, I think he had a little problem at one time. <laughs> How are you a diaper a ghost, huh? <laughs> That's it, Eddie. Oh, boy. Because, um, I mean, I've done blessings and everything else, and nothing works. But because I know that all of the other stuff is for evil. Mm-hmm. But apparently it's not an evil. Right, so it's pretty hard to get a handle on it until uh-huh. you get lost if it's not uh, anything nasty. Yeah, because she says she's not afraid of it. You know, he just she just wishes he'd pick on something different than this one chair. How much water <laughs> is uh, is left there? Generally quite a lot. I've seen some pictures, which I will try to get to you. Okay. And uh, What I will also do for you, too, Father Bob, is I, I, it's odd, odd enough this is a, a seemingly off-the-wall type uh, commentary here with uh, uh, Poltergeist leaving water behind. And yet, uh, Guy Lyon Playfair, a British researcher, came upon just such a thing in a case, and I'll have to find the reference for you. Oh, great. And uh, see how they resolved that case. But there was a case in Britain of water, uh, mysterious puddles of water at a haunted site, uh, blamed on the poltergeist. So it's not something totally off off the wall here. Well, you've been telling me for years that water plays a prominent role in a lot of... Uh, Unusual right, uh, of course, uh, you're right on my daytime tour, for instance, uh, many of the sites are near the Des Plaines River. We pretty much follow the route of the Des Plaines River, which is nothing that I planned ahead of time, but just worked out that way in planning uh, to do uh, sites that were interesting and finding out that many of them are so very close to the river. But uh, poltergeist and water uh, and, and water spots and, and so on, uh, or water uh, uh, materialization, if you will, uh, this, this is something that uh, is not that widely known, but it does pop up. Yeah, because it, it, she really had me baffled with it. And I thought, well, and then when I walked in tonight and I heard you, I said, I'm going to call Richard. <laughs> Have you ever done an exorcism, uh, Father Bob? Uh, not a full exorcism, whereas we knew something was there. But we, I have done in buildings, uh, in particular, there's one out in the western suburbs that a uh, satanic cult had been living in. Mm. And we had had a problem because the painters had been in. Uh, and all of a sudden, here is this um, pentagram showing through on a wall. And so right away she called me up, and I says, go on. I've got a couple of radio programs on the subject of satanic cults oh. uh, in this area and just generally in the country. Uh, it's a real problem, isn't it? It really is. It really is. And people don't don't realize that there's <clears throat> so many different references to it that, uh, you know, that, that they just don't think about. Um, and I know out here in the western suburbs, they've had, you know, they've come across sacrific- uh, sacrif- uh, sacrificing sites. Yeah. And um, they, they found an altar you know, full of blood and everything else out in the woods, and people are going, oh, it's just kids playing around. Well, this... It's a little more than that. It it has to be, because it's not something that kids are just going to pick up, because all of the ritual materials have been found there, too. And uh, there are a group of clergy that are trying to get a handle on it, it, but it's, it's very hard when you're dealing with 
these people because they hide very well, <laughs> you know, and they're not prone to talk about what they do. That's one of the reasons that the, that the Catholic Church has always been against any secret societies, because you don't, you really don't know what people are doing. Many communities don't want to admit that the problem exists. Uh, now, there are a couple of religions that do sacrifice animals, and Santeria is one. That's what, the Haitian? Yeah, or the Latin American, right. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't know just how common that is, but I guess it's exported when people move. They bring it with them. But it's, it's pretty much ethnic, uh, mm -hmm. uh, ethnic uh, tied in, whereas uh, the satanic stuff is, is very often... Uh, you know, uh, middle class uh, America that uh, starts dabbling in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and you, you got to really wonder why. Uh, what is it about their lives that makes them so unhappy, so lost, so confused that they want to reach out for something so ugly? Uh, even if you don't believe in Satan per se, and I'm sure there are some people who don't, like there are some people who are atheists, uh, yeah, okay. still to you know to sacrifice animals and to uh, you know, I have rituals in the forest and uh, drew, uh, to draw strange things in the dirt. I mean, this is not normal human behavior. This is, uh, you know, this borders on some kind of psychotic behavior. Yes, it's very, it's a very abnormal behavior, and there are a lot of uh, researches going on now trying to find out, you know, just how does it get into the kids? Because that's, apparently there's a large group of, uh, I'd say middle teen year kids that are really getting into this. A lot of people uh, think it comes from some forms of music that helps trigger some of it, the heavy metal music. I don't know whether that's true or not. And I got a friend of mine with a 17 year old kid, uh. and he called me up, and the kid is, is still listens to the heavy metal music day and night. He was looking through the kid's school books one day. And through, uh, throughout his notebooks, all the pentagrams he's been uh, scribbling and satanic uh, lines. And uh, his uh, parents confronted him on the issue. He said, oh, I'm only kidding. But for a kid to mess around with that kind of stuff, you know, where does he get it? Where does a kid learn to draw a pentagram or draw an animal with his head missing or other parts? <coughs> There's something wrong there. Yes, yes, uh, Eddie, there really is. And it's... It's a situation that um, it's a very hard way to put, you know, hard thing to put your fingers on exactly. But I think a lot of it is it's our basic society because the parents are double income for the most part, mm -hmm. and they're so busy in their worlds that what the the kids a lot of times they're reaching out. Look at the large number of people of all ages who have forsaken you know, the more traditional religions and beliefs and have joined cults of all kinds. I mean, the, the, the one that really puzzles me the most of all of them, and I've, I've read a lot about this, I still can't figure out what the hell the Unification Church has to offer. I mean, some of the things that this Reverend Moon has done, number one, claiming to be a uh, you know, direct descendant of God, uh, I, I mean, the fact that he can cause so many thousands of people to belong to his movement. Here he is, a convicted criminal, and a, you know, uh, an import from Korea. He's not, uh, you know, not an American citizen. And if he is, he, uh, you know, he's later on. I don't even know if he is. I, I don't. I don't think he was. And, and the worst part about it is, that even after the the charges, the allegations were proven. The, the, these people still follow him. And not only that, but members of other organized religions all defended him because they're worried that if he gets busted, like it was Swaggart and Baker and all these other idiots, uh, your organized religions tend to back them up because they're afraid that they'll be uh, affected if any kinds of rules, regs, on fundraising or IRS uh, uh, oh, changes shit. come along. But the thing, like, for example, uh, Moon pr uh, promotes mass weddings. Thousands of people who don't know each other gather in a, in a public place. He's done this with as many as 6,000 people. And he marries them. But they're not allowed to have any carnal uh, or conjugal knowledge of one another for a minimum of a year. And they must live totally under his direction, his rules. Mm -hmm. 
and of course contributed heavily to his movement. <laughs> now, how how can one man get six thousand people? all at the same moment to literally give up total control of their minds and their lives and their resources to them. How the hell do you poison that many minds at one time? Oh, Eddie, I, I really, I wish there was an answer. I really do, because that, that's something that theologians and psychologists and psychiatrists and everybody have been trying to figure out, because it, it basically is, it's, it's a mind wash. You know, they're, they're programmed for this, um, you, you hear a lot of the, the kids that are basically, they're brainwashed and kidnapped. And even today in Chicago, there are some people looking for their children. And the organization knows where the people are at, and these kids are moved. They never get to stay in the same place. And the kids don't understand why. They're just, they're doing it. Because someone is caring for them, they're taking care of them. But they're really not they're not being fed if they don't bring in an X number of dollars. You know, here, here you've got so many flowers, you sell these flowers. And if you don't come back with the money, then you're not going to eat. And so the kids are out there and they sell the flowers, they come back and they eat and they think that this is love. And a lot of it really, it, it, is, it is a reaching out for the, the kids are reaching out for something that, that's missing in their life. And this, this is where We've had a, a lot of trouble with that, and, and with, like, the one boy, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing around or something, like, with the pentagrams and mm -hmm. stuff. That's not really something that you can just, you know, just play around with. You, you've got to know what you're dealing with. Another one that I used to take such joy in bashing, uh, remember, I think he's dead now, uh, the uh, Sri Rajneesh. It was out in Oregon, had all those thousands of people, oh, yes. a sex cult. Yes. You know, I, I mean, I mean, lots of really, you know, well-to-do people uh, uh, cashed in everything they had and gave it to him so he could buy 100 Rolls Royces. Mm. Now, how can you follow a guy who is very concerned about his own comfort, but not so concerned about yours? A guy who lives a grand and glorious lifestyle at your expense while you live in a tent. How is that possible? I don't understand it. Why, well, you know, you talk about a mind wash. <laughs> yeah. My Lord, you know, there's a disease loose in the land called stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of fools that got it. And, you know, they better start studying that at uh, the National Institute of Mental Health. How yeah. do you cure stupidity? Eh? I guess the best cure is a hit in the head. <laughs> well, maybe, hmm. maybe it'd work to wake them up. I, you know, we, we haven't found the answer to it yet, but... You know, uh, a lot of people, they're trying to get, a, they, they go to a lot of groups to get away from the structured services, the structured church, you know, mm -hmm. what they call the mainline churches, mm -hmm. and they find something, they find someone who's going to tell them what they want to hear, and that's how they do a lot of this, is they're, they're, they're telling the people what the people want to hear, and not what the people should be hearing. Did you see the piece the other day on uh, 60 Minutes on Transcendental Meditation? Yes. What a joke that is. Oh, yeah. PM. You know, I mean, I can, I can sit there for an hour and go, hum, you know, um, <laughs> and come up with anything I wanted. You know? um, 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 <laughs> That's my mantra. Uh, and then, you know, I, I could probably do that on a street corner. Make a lot of money. Make a lot of money and have yeah. a lot of people all standing there on the corner humming together. That's what I'm going to do after the show. I'm <laughs> that's the, that's your barbershop quartet show, Ed. Um, <laughs> Father Bob, I thank you for calling tonight. No problem, Eddie. And Father Bob, I'll be in touch. I'll look up that reference for you. I'd appreciate that, Richard. Okay. Okay, thank we'll thank talk to you later. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Interesting guy. I guess I digressed a little bit, but <laughs> it's such a fascinating thing when you think about how many people are caught up in these uh, counter... Uh, culture, uh, cults and religions that uh, you know, have such weird requirements. I'm going to give your life to somebody else completely and totally without really having a reason to do it. I, you know, it doesn't make any sense to me. Our number is 591-7200, Rich Crow, visiting with us. Uh, We've got to make that call to Ireland in a few minutes as well. We'll do that. If you're on hold for us, we'll be with you in a couple, so don't go away. Again, the number is 591-7200. In your lecture on St. Patrick's Day in the uh, 
The eve of St. Patrick's Day, uh, actually. St. Yeah, yes. Patrick's Day eve in the Irish Castle. How many people can you accommodate? Uh, this will be my second uh, year at the uh, castle. Uh, uh, Reverend Roger Bruin over there at the Unitarian Church invited me back again. And uh, last year we had a uh, decent crowd. I would say we could probably uh, take care of well over 100 uh, oh. on the main floor there. Excellent. Don't worry. We'll find room for you if you oh, want to come out. Thanks. Maybe you can come out this year for it, Ed. Uh, let me talk to you about that. You're not working Saturday nights? Uh, well, it well, depends on what you call work. I know. You're always on duty. I know that. I am. We'll be right back. Uh, we, uh... I've been reporting on some fires this morning, and uh, somewhere in Chicago, Larry Schreiner has got the latest on what's been happening. Let's go there to him at 20 before the hour of 2. Larry? Eddie, as I first told you, probably around midnight, uh, there was some fear that uh, four or five people would possibly die in this fire near 19th and uh, Harding. Harding. The uh, officials are starting to confirm that information now. While officially they will only say one is dead, it appears from my knowledge, from what I've been uh, scooting around the west side, that it looks like four persons are dead. A number of them are children. Now, it's a very large apartment building. The fire is confined to one unit. By that I mean you come in through the door and you go through what would be like a living room, and then you go a little bit farther and it looked like a bedroom straight ahead. Off to the left was another bedroom. The main body of fire was like in the living room, dining room, the first room area, which you could see by the soot throughout that smoke had penetrated to all the rooms. Uh, I looked as well as I could. Uh, I did not see or did I hear a smoke detector. Uh, I saw a number of children's toys. I saw a number of children's shoes. It appears that a number of the victims in this fire uh, are children. Cause of the fire at this time appears to be accidental, possibly electrical in nature, uh, a couple of very long extension cords found, plus uh, you don't know exactly what is left up in that rubble because it is basically just that. From our vantage point now, Larry, we have the following data. The apartment contained three, adult, uh, three children, two adults. Yes, I talked to some neighbors, and, and they mainly talk about the mother and her three children. Mm -hmm. I saw uh, a man brought into one of the hospitals. It appears also that he is dead. Exactly what his relationship is to the other people in the apartment uh, is not known at the time. Uh, once again, if there's a moral to the story, and uh, people are going to say that I'm always preaching, there was a lot of fire. And any time there's not a lot of fire, an early warning device is what is possibly going to save you. It's not foolproof. Nothing in life is foolproof. But the idea is at least if you have a smoke detector, gives you a chance. it gives you a much better chance, especially when you've got these little ones. As I say, I, I don't begrudge any children a toy. Uh, my children had a lot of toys. But uh, a toy's never saved anybody's life. And the idea of these smoke detectors... Uh, uh, could do it. Also, what I saw <clears throat> in the building, but it did not appear to have been uh, anything to do with this fire, in checking other apartments in the building, burglar gates. These heavy-duty burglar gates that are uh, sometimes impregnable. A fireman can get through anything, anything in due time. I mean, you can get into the first net, well, you can get into the Schwartz Bank and mm -hmm. all company in due time, but it takes time. And uh, this, this is the west side of Chicago. This is the real west side. Uh, this is the tough area, 18th and Spalding in this uh, uh, Pulaski Central Park. This is tough out here. Uh, and, and these people want to feel secure in their domiciles. But the thing is that they, uh, you, 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 you try for the safety and, and you give up something, uh, unfortunately, in return. Uh, we'll keep up with it. If we get any more, uh, we'll be back to you. Uh, or we'll be back with Dick Sutcliffe in the 2 o'clock news, but uh, uh, buy those smoke detectors. Another thing Eddie people don't do is they don't what? They don't test them. Yeah, I got to put the batteries in and make sure they're working. That's it. And I cannot tell you how many fires I've been at where the smoke detector's there, but the batteries in a transistor radio or in something else. And folks, just, just don't do it. So uh, the roads are dry. We'll mope around for a little bit while longer. If anything comes up, we'll be back to you, sir. All right, Larry, thank you very much. That's a story from the field on WGN at 145 a.m. Now through Saturday, here's an automobile offer that's not only easily understood, 
but is also very believable, Tom Tom Chevrolet Geo on Dundee Road in Wheeling is celebrating its 40th anniversary with a real money-saving offer. Any Geo, any Chevrolet car or truck is anniversary priced at 40 bucks over invoice. It's $40 over invoice. Then you deduct the factory rebate. My Tom Todd Chevrolet Geo will sell any car or truck in stock for $40 over invoice, minus your factory rebate and minus any and all factory to dealer cash incentives. Your cost is now under factory cost at Tom Todd Chevrolet Geo. Now, you don't have to be a great price negotiator because all you're going to get here is one price. $40 over invoice, minus all rebates, and minus all incentives. Plus, guaranteed top dollar for that trade that you're driving. Your cost is now up to $2,000 below dealer cost. This is the Tom Todd Chevrolet Geo. So if you want to barter and haggle over price, see the other guy. If you want to get the anniversary price that's under cost, see Tom Todd Chevrolet Geo on Dundee Road, east of Route 83 in Wheeling, Illinois. Which crow is here? 591-7200. 28 degrees O'Hare, 32 at Midway, 38 in the downtown studios here at WGN. Humidity 88%, north breeze at 8 miles per hour. Today, mostly sunny, high in the lower 40s. Saturday for Chicago, mostly sunny, high in the mid 40s. Cooler along the lake. And, of course, the Chicago St. Patrick's Day Parade Downtown on Saturday, the Southside Irish Parade coming up on Sunday. About <laughs> Tamparama time at the Grove, the 32nd annual Grow RV show in Elgin, March 15th today through the 25th, with the greatest savings of the year, new Palomino fold-down trailers from 2595 to the 12 foot wide park model. Any floor plans with some that are exactly right for you. New design class C motor homes by Four Winds and Dutchman Travel. All at low Camperama prices with dealers the others can't touch. High Line Avion travel trailers and fifth wheels. South Wind motor homes. You'll meet factory reps or seminars, flea market, camp store. So come and enjoy weekend refreshments. Welcome to Grow RV's Camperama. Daily through the 25th at U.S. 20 Leg Street at Route 59 in Elgin, Illinois. You're uh, visiting with me, Ed Schwartz, Rich Crow, my guest on WGS. What are you looking at? My smart shopper guidelines. Do you want to share them with the rest of us? Buy quality, save money, and get something free. Buy quality, save money, and get something free? I can tell you where you can do that. Sure. Seriously, shop your Auric dealer. Quality Auric vacuum cleaners are preferred by professionals, weigh only eight pounds, self-adjust to all cleaning surfaces, and clean right up to the wall. Okay, that's quality. How about saving money? Buy the Auric XL upright hotel model for only $254 and get the bus. Buster B for half price. The Buster B? Buster B is a portable, lightweight canister vacuum that will do all the above-the-floor cleaning jobs. Now the hard part. What do I get free? How does a free car phone sound? You're kidding. No, buy any Auric XL Uprider canister vacuum now and receive a free car telephone. We're Bob and Betty Sanders suggesting you call 1-800-952-6862 or the Auric dealer nearest you. Richard, we have some calls coming in. 591-7200. This is Bob. Hi, Bob. Good evening, Eddie. How are you? Good. Good morning. I have a question for Mr. Crow concerning the country house on mm-hmm. Laredon Hills. Yes, indeed. Uh, within the last, oh, I'd say five years, I had occasion to make acquaintance with a partial owner of that establishment. And uh, it, as a matter of fact, I, made a, I met him... Oh, after I had heard one of your shows, I think on Halloween with Eddie, when you mentioned that establishment Mm -hmm. and your experiences with it. And I asked this fellow uh, about his personal experiences with the the place there on, I think it's Maple Avenue and Clarendon Hills. Uh, Clarendon Hills Road and 55th Street, right? Yeah, same one. And uh, his response to me was that, in fact, he had uh, had a couple of experiences with the, uh, well, he was down where the restaurant operated, and there were noises from up above that he couldn't explain. 
And as I know the man, uh, there was no pretension. He was straight up and very sincere about uh, what he felt that he had heard, anyway. I'd like to uh, oh, inquire about your knowledge with that place. Okay, well, first of all, I met David Ragnery of the Country House uh, right after he opened the place in 1974. And, in fact, I used to go out there after I was doing some radio work at a LaGrange radio station, which is no longer uh, the same format, and used to go out to the country house afterwards with some friends. And a uh, very pleasant place, as you know, a great place for a hamburger and a uh, nice atmosphere and the boar's head over the fireplace and uh, just a real rustic look to it, a real nice uh, look to the whole place. Um, eventually, though, after a passage of years, David Regnery finally confided to me that he thought the place might be haunted and uh, described to me a number of poltergeist-type activities that had taken place, a lot of uh, phantom footsteps and things of that sort. But what really convinced David that there was something going on was the night that a patron came up to the front door with his date and said half-jokingly to David, who was working the door and carting people and greeting people, Oh my gosh, David, what are you doing, running some kind of a bordello here? He described a blonde in a white dress looking out from the top floor of the building, the uh, uh, east end of the building, looking out over the parking lot, and she was beckoning with her hand in a very seductive way for him to come inside. Now, I don't know if you know the upstairs section of the country house, but that particular room is currently David's office, and prior to that was just a storage area, and back when this occurred, David had the only key, still has the only key to that particular section of the building, ran up there to check, and of course nothing had been disturbed and nobody was up there. So the woman in white has been encountered on occasion uh, as an apparition, if you will, looking out from the uh, top floor onto the parking lot side in particular, but I, I understand at least once or so over the uh, uh, 55th Street side of the building. Uh, but personally now, I've had experiences there, and I had experiences there uh, uh, actually on two different occasions back in 1986. And the first night was in the month of June, the first uh, time this occurred, and it was uh, two instances that same night. And I actually heard a thump, 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 footstep-type heavy sounds at the west end of the building, top floor, uh, as I was actually working with a film crew and doing some filming there on the, on the premises, we ran outside to check after, of course, we checked to see there was nobody uh, human that could have made those sounds, ran outside to the uh, film truck and replayed the video, and the sounds were beyond the range of our microphone, were not picked up. Uh, that was uh, uh, late, well, after, after hours, in fact, we were filming after the place had closed, and uh, after the film crew had pretty much packed up, about a quarter to two or so, about... Uh, 2.20 or so in the morning, uh, I heard a heavy thump of a bump sound, a similar type sound, west end of the building, top floor. Now, very often the occurrences of noise uh, are occurring on the top floor, west end of the building, towards the, uh, uh, on the Clarendon Hill Street side of the property. Uh, that was twice the same night in June of 86 when I heard these sounds uh, very similar to footsteps, thumping. But then, on November the 2nd of that year, All Souls Night, which uh, certainly may be appropriate, a very traditional day for ghostly goings-on, I had a bus group that came in, and I used to do trips out there on occasion by bus, but as you probably know, it's so popular now of an establishment, we really can't fight our way in with a full busload of people. But back in 86, I did on occasion use the site, and uh, as the group got in off the bus, uh, half of them pretty much split up for the restaurant area, the other half split up for the bar. And those in the restaurant area then called me over, began to point to the ceiling and said, listen to that. Now, I was paying attention to just trying to keep everybody happy and wasn't really uh, all that uh, aware of what was going on, uh, subtle sounds. It was uh, actually not all that subtle once it was pointed out. But there were scraping, dragging type sounds that were occurring on the top floor, seemingly from the top floor. When I heard this, instantly I thought, well, somebody from the staff here is trying to play a fast one on me because they knew I was going to be there on the premises that night. So I snuck up one of the two stairwells to the top floor, found nobody up there, came back down, the sounds were continuing, snuck up the other stairwell. Actually, I went up and down, I think, four times that night on the different stairwells trying to capture somebody, catch somebody in uh, the culprit uh, in action, making those strange sounds. But what I did find out in questioning those who stayed behind was that although they heard the sounds, and they heard me go up there and walk around. When I was up on the second floor, I did not hear these sounds. But those who were uh, waiting down below could hear both the sounds of the scraping, dragging type sounds, and they also heard me uh, heard me walking around at the same time, which is pretty cu uh, peculiar because when I was there, I should have heard it because that's where the sounds seemed to emanate from. Well, um, 
off the air, I could, you know, establish the bona fides of the partial owner. You may be acquainted with him. Uh-huh. And when I have, uh, it's been two times that he and I have talked about this, and he's very pragmatic about it. It's just, yes, he has heard things from up above, and uh, they don't give it much thought. It, it's just there. Uh, are you aware of any sinister history to that particular building that could... Uh, Oh, along your line, account for uh, what is happening there or is alleged to have mm -hmm. happened there. Well, one potential starting point for this, uh, if indeed this blonde woman in white is the uh, major cause of this, uh, may well be an incident that happened back in the late 1950s. And uh, David Regnery uh, checking mm -hmm. with the previous owner, the guy that owned the place when it was a uh, neighborhood bar and grill type set up prior to David's acquiring the place in the early 70s. Uh, David found out that there had been an incident in which a blonde woman had gotten into an argument, uh, a dispute with one of the bartenders when this was just a uh, neighborhood uh, bar and grill type set up and left the place in a huff and uh, to make a very long story short, apparently committed suicide by smashing her car up in a utility pole up the road and it's believed that uh, she's the, the the main mover here of, of things that go on. But I've heard other possible explanations, too, because the uh, property does date back to the early years of the century and did have uh, a bit of a checkered history, too, uh, from time to time. So there's a number of different possibilities. Uh, when you've got a piece of property that's decades old, it's often hard to put your finger on exactly where the most likely starting point for a ghost story could be. But the woman who left and uh, uh, smashed her car up and died right after leaving there, and the previous owner remembered well because of potential dram shop uh, uh, hassles on that, remembered the situation quite well. That seems to be uh, at least a, a major uh, 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 cause of what, what's going on here. I've got to get in because of time. I hope that helps you out a bit. Thank you very much. All right, Bob, thank you. Richard Crow is here. We'll give you Richard's address, by the way. If you'd like to take his uh, guided tour of the unusual... Uh, you can drop him a note or make a call and get to his literature. I uh, noticed that we've got a uh, Salem Witchcraft tour coming up you can tell us about as well. So we'll find out all those things and much more. On WGN Chicago, our phone number, by the by, is 591-7200. Let's go to speak up. The spring color is all important in women's fashions, and with the vibrant blazer, shell, and script combination from Spiegel Outlet, you will outshine everyone. Find the 5990 shaped blazer and the 1990 shell in vivid mango, gleaming coral, and tropical hues of teal and blue. Chicago countryside. It's the Frank for your Chevrolet. Z. Frank, the world's largest Chevy GO dealer, has lost its lease on acres of critical car storage. Now Z. Frank is stuck with hundreds of new Chevys and GOs and no place to put them. Rather than pay excessive short-term storage costs, Z. Frank is blowing them out with huge emergency discounts. It's Z. Frank's largest liquidation ever. So own a new 91 S10 Blazer 4x4 for just 13277 how about a 91 inch heavy one and a seven blazer? He's the biggest dealer in the USA. Z Frank for the very best deal today. Z Frank, Z Frank, Z Frank for your Chevrolet. Z Frank Chevrolet Geo at 6060 Northwestern Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Also in Chicago is Richard Crow at 591-7200. The College of DuPage can change your life. Starting April 2nd, find out how by calling them at 708-858-2800, the College of DuPage. Okay, we're back, and this is the Night Owl with you on Denny's Till Dawn. Say, Denny's has got this great new all-night menu. Full moon omelets, sleepwalker specials, red eyes, and chili fries. Maybe you have some suggestions on how to make it even better. If you do, give me a call. Eddie calling from Beamer. Where's Beamer, Eddie? No, Night Owl, babe. They got a 
wrong. I'm calling you from my beamer. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. See, I think better in my car. I think better at night. So one day in my office, I says to my secretary, Brienne, what do you say we work at night out of my car? What'd you say? Ask it yourself. She's in the backseat with a fax machine. Brie, Brienne, it's the night owl. Oh, so what's your Denny's till dawn menu idea, Eddie? Uh, my clients to Denny's in the middle of the night to close a deal. Aren't they sleeping? Exactly. They'll sign anything. So here's the new dish. It's called the Denny's Deal Closer. It's an omelet with mussels, clams, and oysters. Get it? All food that closes. Is that a great idea or what? No, are you Betty? Listen, I'm going to have to have my girl call your girl on that because we're all out of time. But for the rest of you folks, if you got a menu idea for Denny's, give me a call. Or fax me, babe. Okay, babe. This weekend, babe, at Martin's Highway Furniture at Woodstock... They will be saving you a lot of green during their 36-hour saving of the green. You can save 20 to 50 percent on famous name makers of quality furniture and bedding like Englander, Lazy Boy, Norwalk, and more. Now through Monday night, March 18th, there will be plenty of saving of the green throughout the entire store. Martin's Highway Furniture on Lake Avenue and Woodstock, where browsers are always welcome. The number is 815-338-0404. It's a minute after the hour of two. I'm Dick Sutliff is here for WGM Chicago's newsroom. We'll come back to Richard Crow in a couple. Dick, over to you. Thank you, Ed. There are reports of a multiple fatality fire on Chicago's west side. Let's get the latest now on this report from WGN's Larry Schreiner. Larry? Dick, the location, the 1800 block of South Harding Avenue, a large apartment building. It appeared to me the fire was confined to one unit, possibly three rooms, two bedrooms, and a living room, dining room. The death toll looks to be five at this time, two adults and three children. It was not a big fire, as we say. The fire was confined to just that small area. The living room, dining room area took the main body of fire, soot and smoke throughout the rest of the other rooms. It did not appear initially that there were any smoke detectors in this portion of the apartment building. As we say, three little children, two adults appear to be dead. Cause of the fire at this time, accidental in nature, possibly careless use of some electrical equipment. But investigators from both the Chicago Fire Department and Chicago Police Department investigating this fire, which appears now to have taken five lives. Larry Schreiner, WGM News. After a two-day search, a Southside man was arrested Thursday on warrants, charging him with wresting a gun from a police officer, shooting at her, then commandeering a getaway car at gunpoint. 32-year-old Alexandro Gonzalez of South Laughlin Street was arrested in East Chicago, Indiana, where he was staying with relatives. Gonzalez was picked up on warrants, charging him with armed robbery and the attempted murder of a police officer in connection with an incident that occurred Tuesday night at 31st and Morgan. The aftermath of the Persian Gulf War and the search for peace in the Middle East are on Secretary of State James Baker's agenda as he resumes talks with Soviet officials. U.S. officials say Baker gave Foreign Minister Alexander Beshmertnik a thorough briefing on his recent visit to the Middle East in their opening meeting Thursday. After another session with the Kremlin's chief diplomat Friday, Baker will meet with President Gorbachev. President Bush continues his post-war peace initiative in talks with this weekend with British Prime Minister John Major in Bermuda. Bush held an exceptionally productive meeting Thursday, that's what they called it, with French President Mitterrand on the French island of Martinique in the Caribbean. The Centers for Disease Control is calling for a review of federal precautions against medication tampering following three Sudafed poisonings in Washington State. ABC's Richard Davies reports. The announcement by the Centers for Disease Control is the second time this month a government agency has called for a review of soft capsules for non-prescription drugs. Last week, the commissioner of the Food and Drug Administration urged manufacturers to look at other ways to package their over-the-counter products. Health officials are concerned because capsules can be taken apart and refilled. Burroughs Welcome, the maker of Sudafed, has applied to market the drug in a solid caplet. The Sudafed scare has been compared to cases of tampering involving Tylenol and Excedrin capsules in 1982 and 86. Richard Davies, ABC News, New York. Two people died and a third became seriously ill after taking Sudafed 12-hour cold capsules last month in Washington State. A hospital in Green Bay, Wisconsin, is recommending that 7,000 former patients who received blood transfusions be tested for AIDS. Bellin Memorial Hospital says at least three people who received blood between January of 1978 and April of 1985 have contracted the HIV virus. Two of them have died. 
In sports in the NBA, Cleveland edged Milwaukee 103 to 102, and Indiana beat Sacramento 107 to 103. In hockey, the Blackhawks beat Los Angeles 6 to 3. Exhibition baseball, San Diego beat the Cubs 8 to 6. Minnesota defeated the White Sox 7 to 5, and the Giants edged the Brewers 9 to 8. We'll check Chicago's weather right after this. Sit down to a dinner of good food and great values from Jewel. If you're looking for the very best, look for Jewel Chef Cut Lean Round Steak. This week, just $1.99 a pound. Alongside, serve farm stand tender all green asparagus, just 98 cents a pound. At any time's a good time for Jewel Orange Juice, just 99 cents a half gallon. For a dinner of great values. Spring comes in with great coupon values at Jewel. So get clipping and bring in the coupon book you received in the mail from Jewel. This week, you'll save on the widest selection of items for your family. Like a 12-pack of assorted Coke favorites, just $2.49 with coupon. Or a three-pound bag of farm stand yellow onions, only 39 cents with coupon. For the very best coupon values... Clear and cold overnight, low from the lower 30s near the lake to the mid-20s inland. Friday, mostly sunny, high in the lower 40s. Friday night, clear and cold, low in the mid to upper 20s. Saturday, mostly sunny, high in the mid-40s, but cooler along the lake. 38 now at the lakefront, 32 at Midway, 26 officially at O'Hare. 92% humidity, northeast wind 7 miles an hour. Barometer 30.13 and falling, the wind chill 17 degrees. That's WGN News. I'm Dick Sutliff. Again, here's Chicago, Eddie Short. And thank you, Dick, very much. It's uh, 2.06 in the morning. The news and weather and sports brought to you this morning by the good folks at Zool. You've got it, baby. It's Buick LeSabre Month at your better Buick dealers. you got it made in America. When you buy a Buick, you've got a car that's made with pride. It's the thrill you feel when you take the wheel. You're going to be satisfied. Right now, a huge inventory of thousands of Buick LeSabres means you get a deal so great, it's guaranteed to put you back in the market for a new car. But not just any new car. A new 1991 Buick LeSabre. Ranked the most trouble-free American car for two years in a row, according to J.D. Power's 9089 initial quality surveys. That's one reason why LeSabre is Chicagoland's best-selling full-size car. A huge selection, the deal of a lifetime, and a beautiful new Buick LeSabre. They're all yours during LeSabre Month at your better Buick dealers. We're the new symbol for quality. Drive a Buick, you'll agree. You've got it paid. You've got it paid. Mama Celeste's Pizza for One Deluxe. Or cheese, sausage, Suprema, and new zesty four cheese. Up and down to Mama Celeste's tradition of abundance. Coupons are in Thursday's Trivia and Food Guide. If you would like to go on a Richard Crow tour, uh, whether it's a um, tour out of town or a tour in the Chicago area, how does one get the information from you? And we're going hot and heavy right now, Ed, because the weather is not that bad out there. I've got them out every weekend. You can just give me a call at uh, 708-499-0300. 708-499-0300. Give me a call tomorrow after 12 noon. Let me get some sleep after the show. Mm-hmm. Or uh, drop me a line, Richard Crow, C-R-O-W-E, at Box 29054. That's Box 29054, Chicago 60629. I want you out there soon, Ed. Uh, let's see, what would be the most haunted day to go? The most haunted day. Well, the haunted day is going to be when you're there, Ed. I mean, Halloween. It's, uh, well, no, it's don't wait for Halloween. Now, remember, mm-hmm. ghosts are year-round. They're not just Halloween season. That's true. That's true. I will negotiate this. Okay. 591-7200 is the number. When the great outdoors doesn't seem so great, and your biggest adventure is just getting to your car... Nothing beats an Eddie Bauer coat. Except, of course, an Eddie Bauer coat you got for less than half price. That's the kind of savings you'll find right now at the Eddie Bauer warehouse sale. In fact, everything was 50% off. And we just cut prices again. So now you'll save even more on coats, sweaters, shirts, pants, and footwear for men and women. And since we started with more than $14 million worth of inventory, there's still plenty to choose from. So before you go outdoors, be sure to come indoors and save even more at the Eddie Bauer Warehouse Sale, right off Eisenhower Expressway in Hillside Mall. 
Now save 60% at the Eddie Bauer warehouse sale, but hurry, savings like these won't last long. Richard Crowe's address, that's C-R-O-W-E, Richard Crowe, P.O. Box 29054, 29054, Chicago 60629. And uh, we'll tell you about this uh, tour, the Salem Witchcraft Tour, in a moment, which sounds uh, pretty scary. It doesn't take a calculator to add up uh, the value of a dollar. Domino's Produce will fill your bag for a buck, fresh, delicious fruits and vegetables. How about red, white, medium tomatoes, great in sandwiches and salads? Medium tomatoes are only 10 cents each, a limit of 18, please. Add a little sunshine to your life with sweet, juicy Florida oranges. Now 10 cents each, a limit of 18. If grapefruit is an essential part of your breakfast, come to Dominic's where Florida red grapefruit is only 15 cents each, a limit of 18, please. And 15 cents a pound is all you'll pay for green cabbage. Large Idaho baking potatoes are a nutritious, delicious meal all by themselves. Or stuffed with your favorite filling this week, they're just 20 cents a pound. And you won't find a better price on lettuce than at Dominic's. Made in California, had lettuce. It's just 30 cents each, 10 cents. Here and the dine there and the quarter there all adds up. And boy, when you spend a buck, you've got a lot of value in the produce department of your Dominic's grocery store. The uh, trip you've got planned here uh, in May, it says on the folder, Salem Witchcraft three-day, two-night tour, May 3rd through the 5th, uh, Salem, so you're going to Chicago to Boston, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's uh, what's going to happen with this thing? Have you been there before? This is the third annual, Ed, and I'll be up there in uh, Salem. We're going to fly into Boston, jump some limousines up to Salem, which is just a, about a half hour's drive or so north of Boston. We check into the Hawthorne Hotel, where uh, famous people like Elvira and Elizabeth Montgomery have stayed in the past. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we have our walking tours of Old Salem various witchcraft sites, and we're going to do, uh, right, right across the street from the uh, uh, Hawthorne Hotel, by the way, is the Witch Museum. We check that out first for our, uh, actually, we go grab a cup of clam chowder and uh, get in the mood here, and Sam Adams beer, but after that, for lunch, then we'll go over to the uh, Witch Museum, and then we'll have a walking tour over to the Witch House, and the Witch House was the uh, the home of one of the judges from the 1690s, and, you know, just to walk down those old streets that date back to the 1690s, to me, is a big thrill on its own, but uh, we check out uh, the old graveyards out there in town, and uh, day two, we take almost three hours to check out the uh, House of Seven Gables. It's mm. a great uh, complex of property there, uh, the original House of Seven Gables that inspired Hawthorne's famous novel, and, and, the movie, and, and so on in the movie, yeah. and uh, uh, check all that out, and... Uh, for those who really want something different out of their vacation, this is a nice three-day getaway. We meet a witch. Of course, last year we had two. We'll probably have more than that this year. We'll meet at least one witch, Ed, and go out to lobster dinner with her and then go to the graveyard with her at midnight and uh, see what might happen. Lobster dinner, huh? Ooh. Lobsters and witches. That's a combination you can't pass Ooh. up. I got a call from an old friend of yours yesterday, Sergeant John O'Rourke of the North Riverside Police Department, one of your big followers. He dropped me a note. And uh, I, uh, he was very uh, pleased when I told him we were going to be on my pre-St. Patrick's Day uh, uh, little program tonight. He said, you, uh, you guys are always talking about St. Patrick's Day. There's another event he wanted me to plug. On Sunday, March 17th, the annual St. Joseph Day procession will occur in North Riverside, starting off at Vesuvio's Bakery on West Termac Road. The celebrants observing the old Italian custom of carrying the 500-pound statue of St. Joseph to the local church to be blessed. We'll go down south, uh, it's a south on 8th Avenue to 24th, then over to the uh, Mario Christi Church for a special Italian mass. Afterwards, the procession will return to Vesuvio's. And it says this year for the first time the St. Joseph High School band will leave the procession. And, uh, and I thought it very unusual that a uh, very religious event would begin not at a church and end at a church, but begin and end at a bakery. <laughs> so I looked up the number of the bakery in North Riverside, and uh, forgive me, but I have to just... This is our buddy, Sergeant O'Rourke. Uh, let's see here. Read my writing. Got a hold of the folks out at the bakery. Somebody's not in there now. Bakery.
Dick is yeah, always start early, right? Good morning, Vesuvio Bakery. Uh, yeah, can I speak to the head Vesuvio, please? Pardon me? The head man. Who's the boss? Gino. Is Gino there? Yes, I'm here. Gino, this is Ed Schwartz at WGN Radio downtown. Yeah, how are you then? Uh, very good. How are you? We're on the radio. Is that okay? That's fine. Uh, oh, you're listening in the background. I hear you're listening to the radio. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm yeah. work all night. Oh, great. Well, listen, uh, I, you got to tell me, why does the big uh, St. Joseph Day celebration begin and end at Vesuvio's Bakery? Yeah, we've been doing this for a long time now. Well, I mean, why a bakery? I mean, it's very unusual to begin a, a religious uh, observance at a bakery. Are you like a religious bakery? Uh, no, we're a regular bakery, but uh, we've been... Uh, we be celebrating St. Joseph's Table every year for mm -hmm. 15 years now. Does your dough rise? Pardon me? Does the dough always rise for St. Joseph's Day? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is, uh, this is a big deal for you then, huh? Oh, yeah. It's a big deal for us, yes. All right. Well, I hope you get a good crowd, and I hope the weather is oh, nice. It sounds correct. like it's going to be. Yeah, I hope the weather's good, yeah. yeah. What, are you, what are you baking right now? Pardon me? What are you baking right now? Believe me or not, tonight, right now I'm making St. Joseph's bread. St. Joseph's bread. <laughs> yes. All right. Listen, if that Sergeant O'Rourke comes in there, keep him away from the donuts, will you? No, no problem. And keep uh -huh. him out of the cookies, too, all right? Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, you, you guys have a good time and a very successful event. Thank you, Eddie. All right. Thank you. I'll see you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. O'Rourke is out there in that squad car right now salivating over donuts and cookies. I'm sure. I have a great St. Joseph story for you, too. And as long as we're uh, do doing it. some St. Patrick stories, we've got to do a St. Joseph story here, too. Absolutely. And for those who have been on my daytime tour, they, I think they know the story I'm about to talk about. It's out in Oak Brook. And uh, out there on Midwest Avenue is the former St. Joseph Franciscan Seminary. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the Franciscans uh, closed that up after the drop-off and enrollment of seminarians a few years ago. It changed hands. It was going condo. I'm not really sure what the status of the property is right now. However, St. Joseph Seminary had a statue of St. Joseph facing right along the road there for people to drive by. And uh, a very odd thing happened when poor St. Joseph was left behind. After the property changed hands, St. Joseph was left behind, and although he previously faced the road, he now has turned his back to us all. Oh. I think he's showing his displeasure at being uh, left behind in that fashion. I'm sure that the answer is probably a sloppy bulldozer operator or something uh, natural like that, but the symbolism is so blatant. Uh. Poor St. Joseph left behind, and he turns his back. You know, St. Joseph doesn't get enough credit. Here he is, stepfather Jesus, picks up the bills, does a good good job, and uh, he just doesn't get uh, get a lot of credit in this world. But uh, yeah, well, he did show his displeasure over there, I think. Look at all the people that use him for good luck. I'm trying to sell things. Right, to sell real estate and bury St. Joseph in your backyard, and then uh, once your property's sold, you've you you got to dig them up and put them in a place of honor at your new uh, locale. Now, as long as I've heard this uh, this legend, I remember the uh, the way it goes is what you bury the statue of St. Joseph with his head pointed toward the property that you want to sell. Is that is that what you've heard? Uh, that sometimes is a bit fuzzy, but you do bury him in your property, right? In the backyard. In the backyard. But when it sells, don't forget to dig him and up. And you got to dig him up, and you got to put him in a place of prominence in your new new place. Absolutely, and a lot of people do that. I mean, it's very, very common. Oh, uh, St. Joseph's Day is actually what now? What is? That? I don't have my. It's book the nineteenth, two days uh, after two days St. Patrick's afterwards. Day, right? Isn't that also when the swallows return to San Juan? Uh, exactly. Uh, I just, and of course, you know, I'm a stamp collector, Ed, and I just uh, uh, sent for some uh, postmarks to be uh, done at. at uh, uh, the mission out there because they have even the post office is now recognizing this and they have a special cancellation for the swallows return to uh, the Capistrano. There'll be a lot of people there on St. Joseph's Day to see if the birds come back to them. They're, they're very reliable. Yes, it's amazing how the leap years and things does not affect the swallows. They seem to yeah. be able to keep up with that. They must have copies of the old farmer's almanac or something here to they, follow they, on. They, they just, they're, it's all radar. They just guide them right in. This is WGN in Chicago. We're continuing with Richard Crow. We're going from St. Joseph's Table. Uh, to a message on northern Italian cuisine. I bet you they have quite a day over at Feebo's on St. Joseph's Day at 2501 Southwestern Avenue here in Chicago. Not a traditional Italian restaurant. This is a northern Italian restaurant. They serve northern Italian cuisine. I, I can't even give you a, a, an easy way to describe northern Italian. It's just a zesty, uh, full taste. It's a, it's a very unique way to cook. 
fettuccine, linguine, ravioli. They've got a whole pasta menu that'll blow your mind. Uh, whatever you have a hunger for, you'll find on the menu at Fibo. You'll find it prepared uh, to uh, your liking every time you go. From the appetizer through dessert, it's Northern Italian. And that includes the wine. That includes the staff. That includes the attitude. Everything is Northern Italian. And don't forget for dessert, uh, have a Schwartz cannoli. It's uh, about four feet long. It take, take, uh, takes a couple labors to handle it, actually. It's very big. 2501 South on Western Avenue is where you'll find FIBO. So if you're coming from your favorite sporting event or a movie or a play or you're just plain hungry, they're open every day. FIBO is open for lunch and dinner Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10, Friday and Saturday from 11 to midnight. So remember, 2501 Southwestern Avenue, you're going to have a great meal at Fibo. Well, there goes Mr. Chevrolet. He's the biggest dealer in the USA. See Frank for the very best deal today. See Frank for your Chevrolet. See Frank, the world's largest Chevy Zio. Dealer has lost at least an acre of critical car storage. So now the big Z is stuck with hundreds of new Chevys and Zios. No place to park them rather than pay excessive short-term storage costs. See, Frank is blowing them out with huge emergency discounts. It's their largest liquidation ever on a new 1991 Zio Storm from just 8203. That's 8203 for a 1991 Zio Storm. Well, there goes Mr. Chevrolet. He's the biggest dealer in the USA. See Frank for the very best deal today. Z Frank for your Chevrolet. I was helping out a little bit. Z Frank Chevy Geo, 6060 Northwestern Avenue here in Chicago. And summer will be coming soon. Get fit. Call the Glass Court in Lombard for a free three day pass. Call the Glass Court in Lombard. 708-629-3390 for a free pass to fitness today. Um, we uh, are going to call your cousin over in Ireland next. See things uh, his way as they prepare for St. Patrick's Day. We again, we're calling County Dundrum. No, it's Dundrum. Uh, County, Tipperary. County Tipperary. And the village is Dundrum. And the village is Dundrum. I'm going to dial it on the air. It's always fun. What's the, give me the number, Mitch. All right, I'm writing this down. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, that's a uh, international phone number that I have. And let me see if I have... It's, the, it's called the Hotel Dundrum. Is that the... Dundrum name? House. Mm-hmm. Dundrum House, that's right. I used to have a brochure on that, too. I will do that in half a minute. I didn't know why I felt that way. Why I couldn't sleep or eat, cared less about anything in the world. I just start crying over nothing. At Forest Psych Care Hospital, we understand what it's like to be affected by depression. What I needed was a friend. What I found was people who could help. For over 30 years, Forest Psych Care Hospital has understood that depression has causes. And it has cures. Call Forest Psych Care Hospital at 708-635-4100. Now. <laughs> I guess I forgot how good things could be. 2.23. Let's see if we can get this call. So what time is it in Ireland right now? be about five hours different. Five hours different. Mm-hmm. Uh, will we be waking him up at this hour, you think? Mm. He knows we're going to call. He huh? knows we're going to call. All right, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> there, that does it. It's a long number. <laughs> let's see if that gets us through. Hopefully it will. We're going to answer Mr. Austin Crow. Ah, so far so good. Hello. Oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Austin Crow, please. One moment now, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. Staff's up late tonight. Or early. Probably waiting for the last few people to wander on in. Mm. It's a great pub there at the hotel, too, Ed, if you ever get over there. I'm going to do it. Super place. Entertainment there. It's a great place. That's the kind of place you get there. You just don't have to leave it. You know, everything is right there on the grounds and around the uh-huh. hotel. Fishing, horseback riding, everything. 
But I don't see myself up on much of a horse. I <laughs> see myself up on like uh, two horses. Go, go out and feed him an apple or something and yeah. call it call it a day. With my luck, I go there and put the horse on me. How long has it been since your cousin was in to visit with us? It's been a while. Well, it's been about, I think, four Hello? years back, yeah. Uh, Mr. Austin Crowe, please. Yes, speaking. Ed Schwartz and Richard Crowe calling from Chicago. Yes, it's us, Richard. Yes, happy St. Patrick's Day, Austin. And the same to you, Richard. How are you? Very good. We're all getting set for St. Patrick's Day early this year, so. Pardon? We're getting set for St. Patrick's Day early. Decided you we'd are, give you a you call. Are really, yes. How is all, all the crows? Everybody's doing fine. That's good. That's good. How uh, how are you? Do you have a full house there for the holiday this year? Oh, yes, fairly good. Now, we were talking earlier in the show about how we celebrate St. Patrick's Day here in America a bit more wild than you do in Ireland. Would you describe for me, please, uh, on St. Patrick's Day in the evening, what, what it's going to be like there? I mean, it's going to be relatively peaceful, isn't it? It's going to be. Well, I mean, you expect it to be. I, I mean, your pubs... Oh, yes. Yeah. What time do your pubs close there? Yes, well, uh, about midnight. There will be an extension then, huh? Y well, uh, that, yes, there will be extensions, yeah. Yes, indeed. Do you have any... Uh, well... Mm -hmm. Do you have any entertainment this year, Austin? Yes, I have my Irish night. Mm-hmm. In Golden Vale. And we have... Um, we also have a function in the hotel. We have... a. Uh, a GA dinner dance. That's a Gaelic Athletic Association. Do you have many Americans visiting with you uh, at this uh, time? I would say not this time. No, I don't think so. No, it's uh, it's uh, it's an all Irish event. We, I suppose, as a result of uh, the Gulf War, um, American bookings are as yet not great. That's right. I guess a lot of people haven't been traveling the last uh, three or four months, have they? No, they have not. They have not. Yeah. How about Europeans? Did Europeans come to visit or did they stay home too? Well, the Europeans don't start coming in until May. <clears throat> but actually, for the last uh, two years, business from Europe has been very, very good. And it looks like being very good again this year. What's the weather like right now? Uh, mild. Um, a little damp today, but it has been lovely. I suppose running us around about 60 Celsius. Austin, when are you going to come back to America and pay us a visit? It's been uh, too wouldn't long. I, wouldn't I love to be going this minute? <laughs> You'll have to come over and be the ambassador of tourism from Ireland again. Oh, that would be something else. I'd be delighted with that. <laughs> Where's, yes. where's, where's, the big one, of course, will be in Dublin. Dublin has got very big. Last Dublin. year, Austin, last year, they uh, showed the uh, Dublin parade on American television. We got to watch it here in the U.S. Yes. It was good, wasn't it? It was long, I'll say that. Yes. It yes. took all day. It was fascinating to watch. Now, I, I heard you're quite a promoter now. I understand you had meatloaf for a concert. Oh, we had, yes. How did that work out? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Well, who else do you have up your sleeve for concerts this year? Pardon? Who else will you have for concerts this year? Um, I, I don't know, really. You know, we had Johnny Cash last year, and we, we, we had, uh, we had a, a few of your American people. Mm -hmm. We had, um, offhand now, I can't think who we had. Well, when, when you had meatloaf there, did you <laughs> serve soda bread with that meatloaf? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny Cash stayed at Dundrum House, though, did he? Uh, no, at, uh, he stayed at Dundrum House, and he, he played at Golden Vale. Uh-huh. Yes. So By you... the way, how is Eddie? Oh, I'm doing fine, Austin. I'm doing real, real well, and uh, it's been too long since we've talked. It's, uh... Uh, yes, I'd love to meet you again. Well, I hope you'll come back to Chicago. And, oh, oh uh, you can be sure I will. We'll, uh, we'll get you the key to the city, no, no problem. Oh, you did that the last time. I did, but it, was for, but it was for the back door. This time you come in the front door. Okay, okay. Okay, I'll be thinking of that. That's going to make me go back. Absolutely. Well, we, we both wanted to wish you a very happy... St. Patrick's Day. And Thank you, you know. very much. 
And, Eddie, when are you coming to Ireland? I keep telling Richard I'm going to do it, and I promise you in the next two years I'm going to get there. Well, I'll get you a fishing pole and put you down in the <laughs> river there. And uh, you can read away and fish away for a while. Are there any beautiful Irish lasses in the neighborhood? Pardon? Any attractive Irish lasses in the neighborhood? Oh, there? yes. Oh, most definitely, yes. <laughs> ah. uh, you should ask Richard that. <laughs> I will. Although I'm, I'm not getting much of a move out of him, I think. One of these days, Austin. One of these oh, days. Oh, one of these days. That'll be the day. Mm, well, maybe we're going to have a double ceremony. What the heck? Oh, well, listen now. I think whenever... Uh, are you coming this year, Richard? I'm planning on May, Austin. I'll let you oh, know. Oh, yeah. We'll be mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing you. I want to wait for some better weather. I was going to go earlier, but I decided I'd wait for good weather. Yeah. Well, May is lovely. Yeah. Anyway, lovely color. I'm developing a golf course here at the moment. Fabulous. Oh, boy. Everything, yes. huh? Everything. Yes, yes. All right. have, you, have you found anything interesting when you were doing the work out there? Dug up any antiquities or anything? No. Not a thing. Keep no, your eyes, I, keep your eyes I, I, I'm keeping an eye out for that. The, There's the, nothing showing up. A pot of gold. I want to hear you find that. Uh, oh, I wish I did. All right, Austin. Thank you so much for letting us wake well, you up this morning. Well, thank you both very much. It's terrific to hear from you. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Happy St. Pat's. And I won't be happy, Eddie, until you're over here in Ireland. I'll be there. Uh, I hope you will. All the best, Austin. Goodbye to all, and goodbye to all my friends in, the, in, in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you very much, and a very happy Patrick's Day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. It's funny. You see, he says he's digging a golf course. You warn him to keep an eye open for antiquities, right? <laughs> but it was you'll probably find a Budweiser beer can. They're everywhere. A little bit more than Geraldo found, huh? That's one of the funniest. Yeah, right. Uh, do you remember a wonderful humorist who used to do uh, stuff for public television by the name of Gene Shepard? Gene Shepard still does uh, a lot of work. Uh, he's a wonderful humorist and writer. He wrote a wonderful book called uh, In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash. You remember Gene? He did a uh, series for PBS a few years ago where he went and uh, discovered unusual things about unusual places. So he decided to go to the most undisturbed place in North America, which was somewhere up in the Arctic Circle, where man had never gone. They traveled for days. They traveled by plane, by boat, by helicopter, and finally by dog sled. And they went to the spot they were told had never been visited by man, he and the camera crew. They get out of the dog sled, they're tripping across the snow to the edge of the, I guess the Arctic Circle or wherever the hell it is, and you know what the first thing they find there? A beer can. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing they found. A damn beer can, empty, laying on the ice. On an ice it would floor. be empty on top of it, yes. Absolutely. I said, a man has been everywhere. There's no place that a beer, there's no place that Budweiser hasn't gone. I'll bet you the astronauts, when they landed on the moon, found a Budweiser can, but this didn't tell us. Or old style, or one of those. We'll be right back with Bruce Crow if you want to join us. 5917200. What are you looking at? My smart shopper guidelines. Do you want to share them with the rest of us? Buy quality, save money, and get something free. Buy quality, save money, and get something free? I can tell you where you can do that. Sure. Seriously, shop your Auric dealer. Quality Auric vacuum cleaners are preferred by professionals. Weigh only eight pounds, self adjust to all cleaning surfaces, and clean right up to the wall. Okay, that's quality. How about saving money? Buy the Auric XL upright hotel model for only $254 and get the Buster B for half price. The Buster B? Buster B is a portable, lightweight canister vacuum that will do all the above-the-floor cleaning jobs. Now the hard part. What do I get free? How does a free car phone sound? You're kidding. No, buy any Auric XL Uprider canister vacuum now and receive a free car telephone. We're Bob and Betty Sanders suggesting you call 1-800-952-6862 for the Auric dealer nearest you. Car phone supply by Cartel Incorporated. Uh, that's a $99 installation fee required, 180-day new activation uh, by Cartel Incorporated. Call them at 1-800-952-6862 for the orc dealer that is near you. Trucks, 
trucks and more trucks now there's no reason to wait till fall bill jacob chevrolet and joliet is having the earliest truck clearance of the year with beginning of the year selection and end of the year prices 91 dollars over and 91 dollars down on every 1991 chevy truck even dump trucks vans and blazers including all four-door models 91 dollars over invoice and 91 dollars down whether it's two-wheel four-wheel all-wheel the real truck deal is at bill jacobs with 91 dollars over and 91 dollars down Plus, all Gladiator Mark III and Tiara Barron's conversion vans carry special discounts, as well as S10 pickups with up to $1,600 cash back and $169 per month. Don't put off your purchase. Prices will never be lower or savings bigger. Ask about special low 48-month factory financing. Trucks, trucks, and more trucks with $91 over and $91 down at Bill Jacobs Chevrolet, 2001 West Jefferson and Joliet. Well, Ralph, I did it. Good, at least you admitted it. What exactly did you do? I followed through with my New Year's resolution. I bought a Cartel premium mobile phone with crystal clear cellular one service. It's a miracle, but it would have been even smarter if you would have bought two. As a matter of fact, mister, I never make resolutions. I did buy two. For only two forty nine each, they're the best price, full featured car phones in town. And Cartel will fully install them for us. How's that for smart? Of course, all my ideas are smart. Oh, Ooh. Stop by the cartel location near you and pick up a cartel mobile telephone. Sale price to $249, including installation. Call 1-800-CARTEL-1. That's 1-800-227-8351. Six-year warranty with over-the-counter exchange available during the first year only. Credit approval, programming fee, and six months new cellular one service package required. Stay tuned and learn how you can qualify for a free cellular car phone from Oreg Vacuum Cleaners and Cartel. Mr. Ghost Hunter Crow, sir, uh, I've got a question for you. You uh, have been conducting these tours and by bus and by boat and by plane and God knows what for how many years now? Uh, I did my first tour in 1973 for the DePaul Geographical Society and went full-time in 79. Have you noticed new things developing since then or are we dealing with old things that just keep being embellished, repeated. Oh, no, there's always a new story. In fact, uh, this, one of the sad things about this week, talking about something current, is the fact that uh, we had so much snow on the 13th, which was the anniversary of Clarence Darrow's death, mm -hmm. because I was all set to go down there and take some pictures of the anniversary uh, reef tossing off the uh, Clarence Darrow Memorial Bridge there behind the Science and Industry Museum, where Clarence Darrow said he would return from the dead if he could, a la Houdini, back in the 1920s. They had that ceremony yesterday, didn't they? I think. Uh, it was on the 13th, right. I, I didn't get a chance to get out there. I was snowed in. Uh, mm -hmm. didn't get a chance to get out there. I'm not sure how many showed up for it, but I wanted to get out there for it. I have a clipping. I think they may have postponed it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a clipping here somewhere. wonder if Clarence Darrow postponed his return from the dead. Ah, here we go. Let's see if I have it here. The uh, 53rd anniversary of the death of Clarence Darrow will be observed today. Meaning yesterday at the Darrow Bridge in Jackson Park. And in keeping with the spirit of the fan the attorney, the First Amendment, as it relates to wartime, will be debated. And I think this is from yesterday's paper, from yesterday's cups column. Speaking of unusual things, obviously you have uh, spent a lot of uh, your lifetime tromping through cemeteries, leading people around. Uh, what is the reaction to all of the vandalism that has occurred recently at the Olivet Cemetery? It's just a... An exasperating thing to, to look at the video. It's a beautiful old cemetery. It's a real shame to have that happen. Some very, very important monuments and uh, sections out there at uh, Edmond Olivet. Six kids, $50,000 or more in damage. A total of 800 monuments this year have been uh, defaced, destroyed, knocked over. What possesses people to go into a place like that and do that? It's really sad, and uh, you know I've been to, I've been to graveyards, been to cemeteries in uh, in Britain, Ireland, other parts of the world, and you just don't find that in Europe like you find it here. We don't find that uh, you don't find that disregard for the dead, the disregard for these monuments. Often, uh, when you stop and think about it, it's the last uh, vestige of these living people. The the only thing they got left in the world is that name on that tombstone, that uh, the bit of data that's left behind there on that stone. One of the uh, one of the vandalisms that they uh, committed. Uh, I guess it was popular at one time uh, that you could have an embossed photo. I, I guess embossed is the right word. 
uh, on the uh, on the tombstone. In other words, you take a favorite photo of your loved one, and they could somehow reproduce it in metal. So it's that photosensitized it was, porcelain, actually. Yes. Yeah, and it's impervious to the weather, and it's mounted on the tombstone. And so whenever you go visit, there is a, you know a, a very vivid remembrance of your loved one. And they apparently took rocks or parts of monuments and smashed a lot of those irreplaceable photographs of the dead. Vandalism is too easy a word to describe what was done here. I mean, vandalism we tend to look of, uh, look at with a bit of a cocked head and a jaundiced eye, like vandalism is kids just being kids. Vandalism can be very, very destructive monetarily. And in this particular case, if you watch the uh, folks who went out there to look at the damage done to the resting places of their loved ones, these people were psychically harmed, they were hurt, they were shocked, they were crying, they were angry, and it ought to be more than a slap on the wrist for these six punks. First of all, their parents ought to have to fork over the 50 grand to make everything right, and then they should be assigned as community service thousands of hours of keeping that cemetery clean, well mowed, and the graves, you know, well maintained. I wonder if there's a judge in the county who's got the guts to do the right thing. Most of them don't. I mean, cemeteries are not for vandals. No, this is a far cry from uh, spray painting buses or things of that nature. This is a real hate crime when you destroy history like that. I just don't understand it. I don't. I mean, we all did dumb things as kids. I remember a few things that uh, I'm not proud of, but it, it, it never got around to hurting other people like that. I don't know. Is there something today that wasn't in the water when we were younger? That's what a lot of people are asking, and what Father Bob was bringing up earlier, I think, too. Well, I'll tell you, just uh, hallowed ground, and these kids are too dumb to realize, well, maybe their parents will have to pay. We'll be right back. This is WGN in Chicago, and I'm trying to bring you down, but what an aggravating, horrible thing that was. It's 2.42 in the morning. We're going to take a batter return in a couple of minutes. I'm sad to say that. Primetime value days are here for a limited time. You can purchase your own waterfront recreational property of beautiful shadow lakes and receive prime rate financing of 8.3 quarters angle percent or an equivalent cash discount. This special shadow lakes offer means substantial savings for you. There are over 40 waterfront lots available in Fisherman's Village and all are fully improved. You and your family will enjoy 20 miles of pristine shoreline for fishing, swimming, boating, hiking and much more in the spectacular natural setting of Shadow Lakes. Located in nearby Wilmington, uh, off of I-55, Shadow Lakes is close enough to use year-round. This is the time that's prime to see Shadow Lakes. Their special prime rate offer will end 6 p.m. on March 23rd, so for a personal tour, you have to make a phone call. Are you ready? 815 458 2151. Now, if you act now, you'll discover the view at Shadow Lakes is priceless. And for a limited time, the price is primed at 815-458-2151. What are you going to do St. Patrick's Day Day? Are you going to go to the downtown parade, or are you going to stay out of that, or what? Well, I'll be speaking on the night of the 16th, right. so I won't be at the downtown parade this year, just so I'm in good form and I don't slur my speech for my uh, constituents uh, on Saturday you night. I want to do that. But I... <laughs> And as I say, Eddie, it's it's a real uh, real hassle this year to have two parades back to back. So I will be down at the South Side Parade on uh, on Sunday afternoon. And of course, uh, all your South Side friends would love to see you out there, or actually at either parade. I'm sure your fans would like to see you out there. I want to thank you for stopping by. I'll give your phone number one more time if you want to get some data on Richard Crow's vast fascinating tours. And call this number. Okay, give me a call at seven zero eight four nine nine zero three hundred. 708-499-0300. I want to wish you a very happy and a safe uh, St. Patrick's Day, and uh, this has been fun. Yes, uh, I appreciate the chance to come down and uh, do the St. Patrick's Day show with you and give my cousin a call over there in Ireland. That was yeah, a lot of fun, too. Fun. And, uh, on, on your way and of course, you are known universally already. Uh, you're, yeah. you're a name in Ireland to be reckoned with, too. All right. When you're leaving, make sure you say hello to our new security guard. He's a little green fellow here in the doorway. <laughs> Richard Crow. Windy City, Iris, where the crack is always best. Where every day is Patty's day and everyone's a guest. 
If you're Irish on the north side or Irish on the west, welcome to the south side. Come join the Irish best. We're the south side Irish as our fathers were before. We come from the Windy City and we're Irish to the core. From Bridgeport to Beverly, from Midway to South Shore, we're the south side Irish. Let's sing it out once more. Our parents came from Mayo, from Fork and Donegal. We come from Sabina, St. Killian's and St. Gall. St. Leo Visitation, Little Flower and the rest. The South Side Parishes are mighty, they're the best. We're the South Side Irish as our fathers were before. We come from the Windy City and we're Irish to the core. From Bridgeport to Beverly, from Midway to South Shore, we're the South Side Irish. Let's sing it out once more. We live on the South Side, Mayor Daly lives here too. The greatest Irish leader that Chicago ever knew. And he was always proud of his South Side Irish roots. So here's to his honor, to his memory will be true. We're the South Side Irish as our fathers were before. We come from the Windy City and we're Irish to the core. From Bridgeport to Beverly, from Midway to South Shore, we're the South Side Irish. Let's sing it out once more. Sing the songs our fathers sang when they were growing up. Rebel songs of Erin's Isle in a South Side Irish pub. And when it comes to baseball, we have two favorite clubs. The Go Go White Sox. And whoever plays the cup, we're the South Side Irish as our fathers were before. We come from the Windy City and we're Irish to the core. From Bridgeport to Beverly, from Midway to South Shore, we're the South Side Irish. Let's sing it out once more. We're the South Side Irish as our fathers were before. We come from the Windy City and we're Irish to the core. From Bridgeport to Beverly, from Midway to South Shore, we're the South Side Irish. Let's sing it out once more. We're the South Side Irish as our fathers were before. Hey, hey. We come from the Windy City and we're Irish to the core. Ah, uh, that's good. A little sample of what's coming up here the next couple of days on WGN Radio Chicago. St. Patrick's Day is for everyone with specially priced treats. Now through Sunday, your family may candy shop. Boy, are they going to do a business, huh? Quaker oven stuff, incredible stuff, and a crust. Chicken, broccoli, cheddar turnovers, or Italian sausage. Uh, stuffed French rolls. Oh, it sounds good. Quaker oven stuffs. Coupon on Thursday's Tribune food guide, so make sure that you look for it soon. I might not know your name, but I'll know your face when you come back. Bob Haster, Jr. of White Fence Farm. There's a neat sign over the door. Through these doors go the world's finest people, our customers. It's neat to find out what people think about our restaurant, our food. They think nothing of driving 75 miles to enjoy the world's greatest chicken. One day a lady said, uh, where can you get a dinner like this for $7.95? The dinner includes, uh, of course, the entree, uh, baked potato, homemade chicken gravy, the four relishes that we serve, and, of course, the corn fritters. For 34 years now, people have been taking the drive to the country to spend their evenings at White Fence Farm. We're open Tuesday through Saturday, 5 to 9, and Sundays, noon till 8, but not on Monday. Take I-55 south to Joliet Road. Come on out to White Fence Farm. Find out for yourself why most people say White Fence Farm has the world's greatest chicken and a whole lot more. Come out soon. Hello, Americans. I'm Paul Harvey. You know what the news is. In a minute, you're going to hear the rest of the story. Now through Saturday, here's an automobile offer that's not only easily understood, but also very believable. Tom Todd Chevrolet Geo. On Dundee Road in Wheeling, celebrating their 40th anniversary, and they want you to save money. 
Everything Geo, everything shipping like car or truck is 40 bucks over invoice. That's $40 over invoice and deduct the factory rebate. Mr. Todd uh, at his Chevrolet Geo will sell every car or truck in stock for $40 over invoice minus your factory rebate and minus any at all factory to dealer cash incentives. Your cost is now under factory cost at Tom Todd Chevrolet Geo. You don't have to be a great price negotiator because all you get is one price. With the niftiest little Ferrari red device, it weighs less than three pounds. It's called the Dirt Devil, the Dirt Devil. And you walk into any room with this little dandy in your hand, and dirt and dust just give up. I mean, wherever they are. Behind that TV set, over the doors, under the furniture, up and down the stairs. The Dirt Devil by Royal, with a rotary beater and a super suction, gives you the power of an upright in the palm of your hand. Whoever does most of the cleaning in your house, give him or her a hand. A handier than anything, Dirt Devil by Royal. The power of an upright in the palm of your hand. Now, the rest of the story. King Frederick of Prussia woke up one morning, looked over his nation, and saw a country in trouble. The matter with Prussia was a drinking problem. Confined to civilians, this widespread, immoderate imbibing might have gone on for years without serious consequences to Prussia's economy or national security. But now the Prussian military was increasingly under the influence, and the number of soldiers involved was, was no pun intended, staggering. So King Frederick took a closer look at the problem. A recent seven years of war had proved personally devastating to him and financially devastating to his country. The task of reconstruction would be impeded, if not impossible, unless the Prussian people remained industrious and unaddicted. As for national diligence, King Frederick could lead by example, and he did. In fact, he regularly put in 12-hour days conducting affairs of state. But as for addiction, well, the same drinking problem that King Frederick perceived his people as uh, having, he had uh, himself. Oh, he had tried to stop, but unsuccessfully. So the job of getting Prussia back on the wagon was now infinitely more difficult than it might have been, and so the king responded the way most national leaders do when they get in a jam, taxes, more taxes. I don't believe anybody knows exactly where and when sin taxes began, but years before the United States were united, King Frederick of Prussia was levying a hefty luxury tax, which he hoped would get his country unhooked. It did not. In fact, what it did was to inspire a brand new industry for the nation, smuggling and a brand new war, the drinkers versus the revenue officers. And arduous as all of this sounds, it was all the more so for King Frederick. And so in the late summer of 1777, the king issued an old-fashioned proclamation. The history books call it a manifesto, but that scarcely reflects the spirit of the document. The anti-drinking, anti-drinker language was strong. Words like disgusting. And so on the heels of this proclamation, the king launched a medical campaign. He got a long list of prominent physicians to verify that drinking caused sterility and that for a number of presumably indisputable reasons, women who drank must never consider bearing children. And the king's efforts did prove effective, but only for a little while. For few societies anywhere have been able to achieve what King Frederick tried to do to dissuade the populace of his nation from drinking coffee. Coffee, that's right. The drinking problem King Frederick believed would be the ruination of Prussia, a weakness he shared with his people, was a pandemic fondness for coffee. Now, the drink the king was brought up on the one drink which he thought his army and his people needed to remain strong, the one drink that he vigorously promoted in his infamous coffee manifesto, that drink, <laughs> that drink was beer. And now you know the rest of the story. I'll drink to that. Why not? And after I do that, I think I'll have some garlic, too. No, not for seasoning on the food, but because maybe I might be coming down with a cold. Garlic is being rediscovered all over again by the scientific and medical community. Lots of scientific papers are in progress. 
on the healthy aspects of garlic and other uh, plants and herbs and things that grow in the ground. Garlic that I'm talking about is called kaola, K-Y-O-L-I-C. Kaola is the sociable, odorless, and organic aged garlic extract. You'll find it in liquid tablets and capsules. It's the garlic for your health. So if you've been battling a cold or the flu and nothing else is working, maybe this will uh, give you some uh, some assistance. Look for kaola, odorless garlic formula when you're shopping. At such places, you'll find Fruitful Yield stores. There's a Fruitful Yield store in Cicero at 6126 West on Cermak Road and another in Lombard at the Village Plaza on Roosevelt Road. So when you're shopping, make sure that you don't go home without Kaolic. K-Y-O-L-I-C in all of its forms, you'll find one that will work for you. K-Y-O-L-I-C. 26 O'Hare, 32 at Midway, 38 downtown. Today's sunny, high in the lower 40s.